Hello everyone, and welcome to our Vampire the Masquerade 5th edition All Hikata Chronicle Berlin Bloodlines. This is our second pregame session, Conflict. Let's meet our conflicting vampires, starting with Avery. Hello, hello. Uh, my name is Avery. I'm at Golden Gwydion on all of the social media platforms. And this fine evening, I will be playing the Banker of Dunstern. Unser genetiker Herr. Edgar Vate. Edgar Vate, genau. Luna? Uh, hi, I'm Luna, or Jurid by Night. You can find me at Jurid by Night on all the social medias, including Twitch, where I stream Monday to Friday. And today, I will be playing Imogen Lamia. Mm -hmm. Rachel? Hello, everybody. I am the Azure Butterfly, or simply Azure, or Rachel. Uh, I stream at theazurebutterfly.tv, and you can find me at the social medias at underscore Azure Butterfly. Today, I'm playing the Mistress of Ghosts, <laughs> Maria Russolini. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, Ramos. Hello, everyone. I am Gilbert Ramos. I am found everywhere on the socials at Ramos the Nomad. And tonight, I will be playing Dr. Tulio Giovanni. Doctor, indeed. And I didn't do this last time because I always forget, but um, hi, I'm Huddy. I'll be your storyteller this evening. Uh, as always, this is a Vampire the Masquerade 5th edition actual play. We've gone over our safety and our consent, but please check in with yourselves, because your well-being is important to all of us who are playing. All of the content warnings for this game will be in the description. So if you all are ready, lass uns anfangen, and let's return to Berlin. When you peel back the layers of Berlin, you reveal the enigmatic underbelly of the city, where whispers of dirty dealings and clandestine operations lurk in every corner seeping through the very brick and mortar. As we embark on a journey into the darker recesses of Berlin, let us remember, it is not only the echoes of kindred machinations that haunt Berlin's shadows, but ghosts are practically woven into the city's atmosphere, painting a mural that is both macabre and eerie. The year is 2013, and it has been six days since Kenneth Dunsern was extracted from the Camarilla Elysium Maxim, owned by the Keeper of Berlin, Violet Fischer. And as life has pushed forward uninterrupted for the mortals, the underbelly of Berlin has run red with blood, as Prince Breidenstein declared a mass culling of unsanctioned ghouls and blood dolls for all in his domain. All of you, regardless of your affiliation with necromancy, have felt this primordial force of souls being rushed to the enigmatic Shadowlands. For some of you, it has been a euphoric last few days. For others, a reminder of just exactly the type of blood that animates your body and all the horrors lying within it. We begin our scene this evening with you, Edgar. Earlier this week, you had a confrontation with a salubri named Mareike. You used your Auspex's power of unerring pursuit to track her movements over the following nights. It eventually led you to the far east borough of Friedrichshain, which is Anarch Turf. And subsequently, a mixed martial arts gym known to you to be the personal domain of the Anarch Baron Sahira Batama. A dangerous place for you personally, Edgar, and it seems Marika is seeking shelter with your enemy. As you head back to your haven, to your high rise in Charlottenburg, and enter your penthouse, it is eerily quiet in here. When you left, Aelin had left you a message that she would be late returning from the office, but it seems she still has not returned. What do you do as you enter your penthouse? What does a normal night involve coming home for Edgar? I think the first thing that Edgar does when he returns to his haven is he stops. A little ways into the apartment, not quite to the kitchen, as it is, you know, all of its... My the best parts of Miami Vice and Glasgow Midnight. There's the neons that that paint the cold cement floors and and the cold uh, stainless steel fixations. And he'll stop and regard the Norman Rockwell piece he has on the wall there in the entryway. A for very a odd thing to see in Germany. Um, American artists. I'll just stop for a minute and look over his shoulder at the Jackson Pollock on the wall behind him. 
just the stark difference between something that is very much built on form and shape and something that is completely abstract. As you center yourself, as you take this moment to really be present here in your apartment, you smell something strange. Fills your sense, senses suddenly. It's not something you're used to smelling in your apartment. It's incense, you think? And then you get the very distinct smell of something burning. Edgar will reach into his coat and pull out the Dardic handgun. Mm -hmm. You've got about 30 seconds to make yourself known. Now let me ask you a question, Edgar. You have sensed the unseen, is that correct? Mm hmm Now you don't sense anyone in the apartment, at least not from where you are in your apartment. But you know, from being who you are, and from all of your cousins, sometimes you can get haunted, and ghosts can make things smell, make noises. Yeah, that girl will go ahead and pop Sense the Unseen. So you activate Sense the Unseen, don't see any ghosts. But from just beyond where you're standing, further into the back bedrooms, where Kenneth stays when he stays here, and where Aelin sleeps now. You see a light coming from the bathroom of Aelin's bedroom. Quelling that, that panic that's so unseemly on the outside, but kind of ever present within Edgar just beneath the surface. Uh, he'll move in, checking you know, each doorway, checking each room as he moves through until he gets to Aelin's uh, Baratzima. Baratzima. As you do that, you don't see any ghosts. As you keep Sense the Unseen activated, nothing strange. But Aelin's Baratzima, it's not just the light of the bathroom you see coming through it. The light around it is shimmering. And girl, just knock. As you knock, you hear um, like a, a flurry of uh, the water coming on and suddenly everything being uh, moved uh, as if in a panic. And you hear Aelin say, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll be right out, Mr. Wait. Very well. I'll put the gun away. Mm -hmm. Takes a few minutes. Just kind of sit on the corner of her bed and just wait. Takes a few minutes for her to come out, and she does. And um, she's no longer wearing the business attire uh, that you assume she went to work in. She's wearing a robe, uh, and not a robe like you would sleep in. Uh, this robe looks, dare I say, ceremonial. It's gold and uh, sort of uh, gold and uh, beige, and in her arm is a veil. I, I'm, gonna... uh, forgive me, Mr. Wait. I, I did not think you would be back so early. What were you doing in there, Elin? Um, praying. To whom or what? Um, Ahura Master. Explain it to me. I am um, Mazdasana, or I believe you might know Zoroastrian. Yes? Mm, I'm not entirely familiar, no, but um, I've heard it before. I, my people, um, I was born in, in the Turkai. But my people come from Iran, and uh, we follow the threefold path of Asha, good humata, huksta, huvarsta, good thoughts, good words, good deeds. And I, I have felt so very, uh, I, I don't know the word, sad, 
in mourning, grief, the last few days. I don't know why. It's because a lot of the people that were in your situation are dead now. Edgar, as you look at her and speak to her, she's still shimmering. That golden light was coming from her. It is fading as you look at her, but she was making it. You really believe in that? I, I do. It wasn't a question, Dara. It's I, an observation. I... Oh. Uh, okay. I'm sure you learned from your time with Violet. Some of us can see things. Things beyond things, if you will. Yes. You have the glimmer of faith about you. Real faith. No. Not some kind of mass manipulation mechanism. True faith. You should make sure that when you're praying, uh, no, n only I'm around if anyone is around. That's... True faith is a matter of contention amongst our kind. Does it make you uncomfortable, sir? I've never been afraid of death a day in my life. Perhaps you should know I was praying for you. You're sweet. Thank you. I took um, a photo of, and please don't be angry. I took a photo of you while you were sleeping and I passed <laughs> it into the fire. So so that um, a Hora Mastag will protect you in these very dark, sad times that I feel now that I have tasted your blood. I'm, I'm going to um, change. It's not proper to, for you to see me in these robes. I'll wait for you in the, in the lounge. Yes, I, I left my, I bought more, I left some of the bags from, we got from Kodam. I'm just going to go grab them. And she leaves the bedroom. And as she moves past you and the bathroom is revealed to you, you see the items that she was praying with, um, a small um, copper basin that she had put a wood into and had, was burning. And you also see the mirror of the bathroom. Nothing unusual about that. But reflected in the mirror behind you is the Fawanenza. And with Sense of the Unseen activated as you look in the mirror, the Fawanenza looks horrible. It looks decaying and dying and like something out of a nightmare. Like when you were a little boy and some of the Giovanni used to sit around and talk about their escapades into the Shadowlands and how strange it looked. That is what the Fawaninzel looks like. And if you would like to get a better look at it, you would need to cross over to your balcony. Take your girl, take a minute to look at him. Truly contemplating if he really even wants to it know anything. It's not pleasant looking. But as he said, he's never been afraid of death a day in his life. So, cross out to the balcony. There's almost a shadow. I think he would even. I think he would even grab his binoculars off the off Wonderful. the table. It's almost as if the island is covered in shadow, but not a passive shadow. 
an entropic one. It seems to be chewing on the base of the island, on the leaves, on the grass, extending out into the water from a central point, you think. And as you look through your binoculars at it, you see something on the water. Uh, you have sense the unseen activated, so again, these might be ghosts, but you see a figure dressed in white and a figure dressed in black with a white mask. They're dancing on the water. It is April, it is not frozen, but they are dancing, skating, holding hands. It looks very intimate, like a yin and a yang symbol or a black swan and a white swan. And they are dancing on the water all around the Fawaninsel. You can be sure if they're ghosts or not if you turn off Sense of the Unseen. He will, just for that moment. They are still there when you turn off your senses. I think what Edgar's going to do is pull out his cell phone mm -hmm. and see if he can get a quick video. Mm -hmm. You certainly can. And then we'll text Osric. Hmm. So, you're going to send the video to Osric? Not quite yet. What are you going to text um, Osric? Text Osric. Can you get a meet between us scheduled? Do you have time? It's interesting. When you text him that, you hear a phone go off somewhere else in your apartment. And a doorbell rings. Your doorbell. Nice. You hear Aelin go over to the door and open it. And then you hear her make a small yelp. Edgar, walk around the corner. You see your uncle Osric has Aelin by the throat and has a gun up to her head. Take your hands off her. No. What did you do? Exactly what you told us to. He's going to remove the gun from Aelin, and he's going to walk right up to you and point it right at your eye. Did you stick a screwdriver in someone's eye in Elysium? <laughs> And it's a bit more nuanced than that. Send your harlot home and sit down. She belongs here. She's my ghoul. And you'll speak to her with respect. How many dots in fortitude do you have? One. <clears throat> you can roll me um, a stamina and fortitude roll. <laughs> this is not a super great role for Edgar. It should be. Four, five, um, six. Can seven, I blood search for this? Eight. Yes, you may. Eight. I will get hungry. Mm -hmm. So that puts me at two. Mm hmm. Um, that will be four successes. Okay. You're going to take two points of superficial damage as he smacks you across the face hard enough, with a margin of four, hard enough to knock you down back onto your couch. Okay. We'll just look up. All right. Would we like to start? Shut up. Talking about this. I want you to first start by shutting up. One, I'm not even going to entertain. I'm not even going to remember that you told me you took a ghoul outside the family. I'm not even going to remember it. Okay? You stuck a screwdriver in the eye of the keeper's child. You told the keeper... That the prince is going to be ripped apart? She deserved to know. Yeah. She's fled the city. 
Good. Yeah. She's well, smart. She, yeah. She is smart. She's so smart that she called me and told me that Siegmund has gone to the sheriff. Seems that her child's not as smart then. Look. I have entertained you as long as I possibly can. I think Olivia made a good choice making you her child. I think you have more potential than any of the Dunsern that I've run into and dusted in my years. But I think that you and your idiot brother cannot handle things alone. I think that you're upset because Tulio was involved, Osric, and that's fine. I wasn't very happy about it either. But we can sit down and talk about this. No. So the... please. No, I insist. I... Let me offer you some hospitality for once. You've let me into your home so many times. Please. We don't have time to chat about it. Because... Make time. The sheriff is going to kill Kenneth and kill you. And I'm not going to be the one picking up the pieces for Olivia after that. He's going to try. He's going to succeed. I don't know. Yeah. It's not the same sheriff. The one that uh, Prince Bridenstine forced to uh, kill his family. He's different. He's a Banu Hakim. New in the city. And he's not to be really? f fucked with. It used to be a big deal in the Ashira, if you even know what that is. Yeah, the, the Islamic kindred. Yeah, I'm aware. Mm. Please, sit. Let's actually talk for a minute. Quickly. And then girl just take his phone, pull up the video, turn it, slide it across the coffee table. What the fuck am I looking at? What I just caught off the balcony. Are you saying the dragon is Jesus? But what I'm saying is I don't think anyone else has a visual of it. And now you can have the only one if you want. What the fuck good does that but do that's me? A... Why the fuck would I care that's about it? That's Violet's bit uh, business. I could give a shit about the dragon. And you obviously have some sort of deal going with her. It's and that sexual. I'm more than happy... Well, fair enough, but... I'm obliged, dear uncle, to help you maintain that relationship. Edgar, please. Put that video somewhere where no one is going to see it. Especially not when you go talk to the sheriff tonight. Because you have one chance to fix this. And I'm going to use your fuck up to fix other things going on in the family. You and I both know we don't like where Olivia has landed with the Lamia. Okay? And we both know we don't like where she's landed with the Giovanni. Tulio, whatever the fuck his name is. So we're going to fix it. Okay? Now, coteries aren't really a thing we do in our family, but you need one, Edgar. Because obviously you care too much about Kenneth, so much so that you walk into Elysium with a goddamn screwdriver in your pocket and you stick it in the kid's eye. You need someone looking out for you, someone telling you when you should and should not do things. Who's his father, Osric? Hardly see how that's relevant. He's asking, so it's relevant. Not to me. He's done, CERN, and that's it. He doesn't need to know all the gory details until and if and when you embrace him. Fair enough. But he's, you know as well as I do, he's not ready. Nope. Give me, give me the lowdown on this. Banu Hakim. His name is Kasim. Kasim Batama. I 
seen. What's what's his angle? Now don't laugh. Justice. What's his other angle? Fortunately, I have no idea. He seems to actually care about that. A little, yeah. But we don't have time to sit around and talk about uh, the proclivities of the new sheriff. The fact that he even offered himself up for the position after what Bridenstine did in the last one makes me think that he is not afraid of Bridenstine. Good. We can use that. Yes, we can. And you're going to. But right now, we have to go. You have to pick up your idiot brother. And we're going to go... His name is fucking Tulio. We have to go pick up your brother. And we need to go see Minerva. Do we have to? Hey. Fuck off. She's like a sister to me. I, I know you guys have a thing. I mean, I'm, I don't... We don't have a thing. Yeah. We don't. She never wanted a thing. Osric. She never wanted a thing. You don't have to lie to me. I'm just... Why the fuck would I lie to you? Yeah. Jesus Christ, you you're not reason. that important to me that I would waste my time trying to think up lies for you. Oh, come on. Edgar, you're going on my last nerves. All right. My car, yours. Heal the shiner on your eye. Yours. Yeah. Edgar will try and try and heal the superficial damage really quick. Mm -hmm. I don't get any hunger. Oh, wonderful. So you do as he says. You heal the shiner. And as he picks you up off of the couch rather roughly heads you walks you to the door he whispers very close to you and says don't tell olivia about her i do not want to have to kill you she's gonna find out eventually but i don't plan on being the one who says something no i don't even i never even fucking saw her all right Wait. Osric. Right. Hmm. What? You're allowed you're allowed to be afraid. Nah. Hung like a horse and it'll just slap him <laughs> on the back and keep walking. Alright. And now we are going to move our scene that outburst over to Imogen. Imogen, you are here in the borough of Steglitz Zelendorf, a massive manor home where you tend your sire's garden in the home's ornate conservatory. Here is a sanctuary for you, Imogen, and the scent of orchids and roses surround and enrich you. Of course, there's also the smell of blood permeating every botanical specimen patch of jasmines in front of you writhes and breathes as you trim away its overgrowth, the soil churning in anticipation of flesh and viscera. Do you feed it your blood, Imogen? Yes, I do. Free rouse checks, please. Yay. Success. What, I, what I've heard about. <laughs> Success. So you only get one point hungrier, so you should be at two hunger, which is uh, manageable. It's not terribly, terribly bad. <clears throat> and as you pour your blood into the jasmine, it practically sings in glee. It's a visceral, guttural noise that it makes, but you can tell that it is happy with your uh, sacrifice to it. Excellent. <laughs> as you continue um, trimming away any overgrowth. Um, you also hear the harmony of the ritual happening in the house behind you. It's starting to die down now. 
Uh, the screaming has long subsided, and uh, now it's just a melody of passion and arousal and eroticism, and it echoes through the ventilation system here in the conservatory, so you don't miss a single second of it, even though you are not participating in it. And uh, before too long, your mother, Hanalora Lamia, appears in the archway, along with one of your many, many siblings, uh, Carla Lamia. Carla is carrying a corpse in her arms, a dead person. Um, their arms and thighs are covered in deeply red bite wounds. And as Hanalora stands there in the archway, she looks at you and she says, um, Etten Hetz, in fact, heart attack. She is in oh. Lilith's garden now. Ahi hai Lilithu. Ahi hai Lilithu. She smiles. She was, you can tell, she was a little worried you might not have repeated it. Carla walks over to the jasmine patch uh, where there is a small slab right next to it and begins taking a butcher's knife to the body and chopping it to feed it to the hungry plants. Hanaloha comes over to you with her arms outstretched to embrace you. I'll accept this embrace. Mm -hmm. And she'll kiss you on your forehead. Why are you out here, my child? You did not want to join us. Well, the garden needs tending, mother. Yes, it does. But one of our many, many promises that we made to the Dark Mother is that uh, we will never forego her rituals. She'll kind of look over to the body being chopped up. The next one. I'll join the next one. She sort of... She's wearing um, wide-legged uh, slacks and uh, crimson blouse, and she sort of starts pacing around the side of the conservatory, sort of walking around you in a circle. And she says, um, The dark mother suffered in the wastes. When we follow her in blood-soaked footsteps, we are the children that she, lo that she lost, born anew to make her enemies pay for what they've done. You believe this, yes? Of course, Mother. I... I just want to see you thrive, like your beautiful flowers, my Natochta. She'll kind of smile, look down at her feet. You are precious to me, and precious to Lilith, and I truly believe precious to the city. As I have tasted your blood, and I know who you are, and who your sire is. I will not speak his name. I understand, as much as Lilith does, the horrible things that have occurred, but I know that you will rise above it, like these beautiful vines rise above the conservatory. Thank you for not speaking his name. Of course. And you believe these things about yourself, yes? So hesitate, of course. Do not lie to me, child. It's some days it's harder than others. Yes. But that's good. Pain comes before pleasure. We cannot have one without the other. How could we feel the experience of both if we do not know what pain is, know what pleasure is, is would lose all meaning, everything that we do. We cannot have only darkness and only light. That does not live this way. Balance. Yeah. Sehr gut. Meine Schatzele. <clears throat> Jetzt. Wir müssen gehen. We must go. We need to go see your Tante Minerva and your 
uh, Cousina Maria. Apparently, your uncle Osric has called an uh, emergency meeting. I do not know what it's about, but uh, Osric is uh, is a good man, I believe, and his family. I imagine Olivia doesn't know. I imagine you are correct. That is, a huh? di- that's a, that, that is a different topic. One that we cannot broach when Osric is there. Because as much as I believe he believes we should return to our position as guardians and protectors of the clan, his love and loyalty to Olivia is unwavering. But should she be removed from the picture? You know that is our goal. Then that is not something we would have to worry about anymore. Right. Soon. Soon is relative for us, Manasusa. But someday. Someday. Shouldn't waste any time then. No, we shan't. As to hunger. Are you hungry? Slightly. I fed the plants. She will turn and she will call out. <clears throat> and two more of your sisters appear out from the main part of the house. They have with them a man. He's struggling. He's confused. And uh, he's not speaking German. He's speaking some language that you don't know. And um, they bring him out into the conservatory. And Hannah Laura says, I am... Your sisters caught him um, trying to peek into our home. They heard uh, the sounds of a ritual, and uh, I believe he got curious. Should he be removed, then? Um, No, he seems to be an excellent sacrifice to the Great Mother. But you should um, sample him first. Of course. And she will drink. Mm Mm-hmm. And as you bite in, of course, he screams and yells and tries to break from their grasp, but um, your sisters are well-versed and strong in keeping someone from moving if they don't want them to. And you may remove. Unless you'd like to kill him, of course. Then you may take all of your hunger away. Just the one. Just the one? Hanaloha looks very pleased with you. Just... <clears throat> uh, perhaps we will uh, keep him locked up and then perhaps tomorrow feed him to the jasmines we don't want to overfeed them and then they will expect more and more and more you know it's balance of course as you said balance come um we are going to i believe uh Jaeger is going to drive us come excellent and she will follow swiftly mm-hmm. <clears throat> we move our scene now to maria in the borough of Kreuzberg. Maria, right now you're in your subterranean level, or as the Germans would say, your Untergeschoss uh, of your shop, Mm -hmm. occult, in in what could be called your workshop. This is where you do your ghostly ceremonies, excuse me, where you gather what fetters you have collected or had been traded or or, uh, taken from wherever, uh, and how you rip unsuspecting wraiths from the esoteric shadowlands, bind them to items for sale or personal amassment, or just to have someone to talk to whatever you happen to be in the mood for. Now, Maria, would you like to describe your process, if there is any, that you partake in before you perform this particular ceremony? Um, Maria likes to uh, burn uh, incense Mm -hmm. before uh, getting herself into uh, a grounded, uh, better mental space to be able to uh, handle anything that might come her way from this. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably taking about 30 to 45 minutes to, to really, let the to energies really get flow. The, get the, get the, yeah. the grounding going. Exactly. And, what- and also making sure that all the necessary items that she needs for this are gathered. She's got mm-hmm. salts as needed. She's got, um, she's got uh, a ritual dagger that she uses. So uh, cut yourself for the blood? Mm-hmm. 
Exactly. <clears throat> so what you have before you is you have a cigarette case, uh, one that looks something like this. And um, this was something that you traded um, with uh, Adelaide for. Adelaide had uh, found it among personal effects um, in the morgue with her sire. And uh, sometimes she just comes by or sometimes she doesn't even stay. She just drops stuff off at your door, right? Um, and so this one was one and you looked through all the items and, and you know, there's been many times where the boxes, it's nothing. It's personal effects, but it, they're not fetters. They don't mean anything. So you just chuck them out or you sell them in your shop, whatever. But this one. Oh, we totally sell them. Oh, well, for sure. But this one was absolutely um, a fetter. So you have it there. You've um, used your salt and your incense and you, um, now all that's left is for you to pour your blood over it and to rip that wraith out of the Shadowlands and into your shop. So please, three Rouse checks. Now, normally it wouldn't be three here Rouse checks, go. but we're doing three Rouse checks at the top of a Chronicle for everyone. Because that's here how we, we go. do it here. Yeah. So Maria place it, will place the uh, the the cigarette case down before her on the ground, take the dagger, uh, nick her wrist, mm -hmm. and then let the Vitae drip over it. Mm -hmm. And it's one failure. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay it, it, in those boxes sometimes adelaide gives you some leftover blood from those bodies as well that's one success mm -hmm. and another failure okay so you're so going to be at three hunger and as you pour your blood over the cigarette case you hear that voice in your head of your dynamuta i told you you were never meant for this can't handle it. You don't know what you're doing. You come home and you make me like you and I'll teach you everything that you're supposed to know. But first get us something to eat. I can't be hungry. Be quiet right now. You have no, you have no words here for me. Your ritual is successful. And what you expect to happen it's not what happens. Normally when you do this, um, the very uh, wispy ethereal ghost will appear um, usually out of the object or from some shadow in the room and usually is focal centered on a chair that you have in front of your desk or your ceremonial desk where you do this. Um, but what appears to you is something much more corporeal than you were anticipating. Um, almost a fully formed person appears in your chair um, they are dressed in an ill-fitting suit. And again, they are still translucent and wispy, but they look like a person and it's very strange. Uh, ill-fitting suit and slicked back hair. And they have fangs. And they- My, my, my. They look at you and they say, fucking hell, not a fucking Rossellini. Are you joking? The- neutral expression that she had maybe even upset after with the voice in her head disappears mm -hmm. she just my aren't you a strong one aren't you she's gonna take a step closer and attempt to lightly brush a hand where the face would be yep. your hand goes through it but um you think maybe he felt that a little bit hmm well i mean I'm sorry. I'm not. I'd rather be here than where I was. I just, I didn't expect to be a ghost. It, I did, it didn't cross my mind that it would ever happen. I thought when we She's... died, we died. <laughs> uh, do I know about, uh, what do I know about that really? Like when it comes to like kindred. Uh... Would you like to know the lore of Huddy game? Oh my God. Make a wits and a cult roll of how I deal with that. The, I think the only person in any game I've ever played is Josh, who knows this. And we did a very long Conda private session. Did a, a cult <laughs> and what was it? Cult and what? Wits. Wits. Mm -hmm. That is seven dice. That should be a good roll for you. We'll see. <laughs> it's a little. It's left a little ambiguous in the world of darkness. It's like yes, no, maybe. Oh, right. Sort of I forgot because three hunger I use three of those need to be hunger dice, right? Yes. So replace three of your dice with hunger dice. Uh so I rolled uh two crits mm -hmm. 
Mm. Uh, and uh, two regular successes. Was um, both so of that's... those crits on a black dice, or was one on any on a red dice? This is this is this is where it gets fun. Two of the uh, both of the crits are on the the hunger dice. Amazing. So unfortunately, Maria, you are going to fall under your clan compulsion of morbidity, and until you see something come to life or something die, you're going to be at a two dice penalty. Now that can be anything. It is up to you how you decide that. But as you look at him and uh, he poses this question, you have spent enough time studying wraiths. It is your um, particular, uh, what, what is the word, hyperfixation. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you would know that um, vampires can become wraiths, certainly, if they are high enough humanity. And you had heard from another wraith uh, that you were talking to or interrogating, however you want to put it, um, that there's some, there's some Hekata somewhere in Berlin that has a particular interest in ripping out the souls of salubris and consuming them to learn their particular gifts. Hmm. So she's just going to say, <clears throat> well, uh, We do have the capability of becoming wraiths, yes. Tell me a little bit about yourself. And as she says that, she's going to grab, like, a chair that was sitting by and kind of, like, reverse, place mm -hmm. it down. And and she's going to just rest her cheeks, rest her uh, chin on her hands. Um, my name is Giancarlo Putinesca. Oh, Putinesca. I uh, got iced by Osric Dunser. I don't know how long ago. The time just does not matter in the Shadowlands at all. Does the name ring any bells? He's a Putanesca. You really don't put in stock. Of... There's so many of them. <laughs> Out of all of the bloodlines of the Hikata here in Berlin, the Putanesca are the most prolific. Now, why would he want you iced? That sounds so fascinating. I mean, Osric is kind of like the guy who... They call him the Pope, right? So he's kind of like, passes judgment on everyone like he's so fucking great. I may have been talking to a blood doll about stuff I shouldn't have been talking to her about. Hmm. I mean, that's what he says. I mean, I don't think it was that big of a deal. But I'm dead now, so what the fuck do I know? Oh, man. I know, right? Why don't you tell me a little bit more? What were you talking about with the blood doll? I was just talking to her about us, you know, the family and how we don't have to listen to the prince and how, you know, oh. it's kind of awesome. And yeah, I kind of <laughs> fucked up, I guess, is the moral of my story. But um, but, you, but I'm here now and I know you're Rossellini because, you know, you give off that vibe, right? Um, don't send me back there. What will you give me for it? Information. <laughs> Let me make, let's make a deal. You bind me to to you, bind me to you. Let me be your little monkey boy. And um, you're into that, are you? Did you ever meet Maurizio Putinesca, the guy who runs the show? That's sort of his whole vibe. <laughs> um, you bind me to you, and I'll be your your servant. Whatever you want me to do. <laughs> and I'll give you the name of a wraith who knows something about uh, Olivia Dunser. Oh my god. Okay, so the second she hears that, oof. Her grin was playful. Now she is interested. And she says... Now, I, I, I don't know where her fetter is. But mm -hmm. I know the wraith. I met her. A fetter can be found. Fetter can be found. Uh, the wraith's name is Ida. It's Olivia's mother. <laughs> oh. Shun. Oh, mm, wonderful. I, thought you I love that. it. You have no idea. My, my. I'm going to have such good use for you. I need to, no, storyteller needs to ask you a very personal question. Are you actually going to bind him to yourself, or are you going to just eat him? Because you are their hunger. Mm. 
Now, here's the thing. <laughs> she's debating. She's thinking. Sure, she's it's, sitting it's, there. It's the sort of the Rossellini debate. All every night, I'm thinking. You know, I am a little a little hungry, and I. But I also could use a nice little guardian around the haven, too. Hmm. I'm going to make a little personal roll really quick. <laughs> he sees you hesitating. And he says, come on. I mean, you know, I'll prove my worth to you. And maybe, you know, I'll, you let me skin ride you and we'll have a real good time. Skin ride? Yeah, that's when I, um, you let me uh, drive at the wheel for a little while. Hmm. You know what? You have a deal, but under one condition. Not me. My home. That's no fun. You take me out sometimes? Maybe if you're good. I can be very good. That remains to be seen. But... Hmm. You have a deal, Putinesca. Let's see how useful you can actually be. And would you like to bind him to the cigarette case? Yes. Okay. So We're going to bind him to it. So you can go ahead and make me that roll. It's a rouse check, please. Uh, rouse check. And intelligence and oblivion. Uh. Crits on a rouse check don't matter, right? That's a success. Okay. Uh, okay, and then it's... Did wits and oblivion? Intelligence and oblivion. Oh, wit, intelligence, oblivion. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, three successes. Mm -hmm. So, very easily, you um, pull his spirit, pull it down into... Expend more blood, and pull it down into the um, cigarette case, into his fetter. And now he is here. He's more corporeal than you would expect uh, a ghost to be. So you can actually be able to physically see him and people can physically see him. But he can turn himself invisible if you so choose. And as you finish this particular ritual, you hear your mother calling you. Not your birth mother, but um, Minerva. And she goes, Maria! I need, you, up I need you upstairs, please. <laughs> oh. They just can't get any better, can it? And she's just going to um, pocket mm -hmm. the cigarette case for now, uh, sliding it into her jacket pocket, and then brushing herself off. Um, the wound that she opened up, does she need to lick it closed herself? Not with a ritual it... knife. I don't, just like with Tremere, I don't make you have to do that now. Okay, cool. Uh, and she's going to tidy up a little bit, maybe uh, place the chair back to where it was before, before... Um, Straightening up and making her way upstairs. Minerva is right now um, up in your shop. She's turning the sign to closed. She's um, cleaning a lot of the, the thing, any items that were left out, pulling back the tape of the register. Uh, Maria, we have guests coming. Your uncle Osric, uh, oh. your auntie Hannah Laurie and uh, um, Imogen are coming. And I think more. I think Osric's bringing people too. They're, they're coming here. What happened? I don't know. I don't know, but you, look, you look famished. My baby can't be star. I sent I sent Karin home, but your looks starving. Come have something to eat, and she cuts open her wrist. Uh, and uh, Maria is not going to hesitate. She's going to go uh, gently grabbing the offered wrist and bringing it to her lips. And you make clear all of your hunger. Oh, not all of your hunger, but your up to up to one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm ready to do the danger sip. No, 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 not yet. <laughs> she did. Uh, <laughs> she got three, three successes, so she doesn't get any hungrier feeding you, as a good mother should. Um, <laughs> and uh, as you drink her blood, of course, her blood is divine, delicious. You've supped on her blood for many years now and uh, have been bound to her for many years now. <clears throat> it's warm and comforting. And it gives you all of the pleasant, homey feelings that you mm -hmm. missed out as a mortal. And it's just mm -hmm. the best. 
Danke, Mama. Oh, bitte schön. Aber ja, all the family is coming. I have done nothing. We don't have we don't have a, a, a feast prepared. I I didn't even I didn't know. I I, I would have had a, uh, got she's blood. She's gonna dolls. hold up a hand, mm -hmm. and she's gonna say, "Before all that, I have a surprise for you, Mama. I have information. I know where Olivia's mother <gasps> is." I know. You found me just finishing up with this quite lovely little Putinesca wraith Ugh. that I found. Yeah, I know. But he claims to know the location of Olivia's mother's wraith. He knows where Ida is. Could you imagine what we could do with her? This, this could be it. This, this could be our way to get rid of her. We could prove, exactly. we could prove that other wraith that told you, that told you that Olivia is not a Dunsern. That could be <laughs> it. That could be the key. I mean, Dunsern, she's Dunsern now, but she wasn't born one. Exactly. I just need to find the fetter. If we just, get, if we the just get enough of the bloodlines to be on our side, we can get her out of there and put Tulio in place. Your brother should be running this family. <laughs> whatever you wish mama your will is my will well what i wish That's right now is that i had had reached out to, to alexander and gotten some some food some some good food for everyone I, I i can't they can't do this i don't like when people just spring up on me i can't this isn't the way we do it well there's not much to be done in the moment we gotta What's it? What's the saying? We got to play the cards that we're dealt with, right? When are you gonna make me a grandmother? I mean, Karin is so lovely, and 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 if Tulio was in charge, he would let you embrace her, even though she's not a Rossellini. There's a little bit of a longing look that spreads across uh, Maria's face, curve of her lip, twitching a little bit. She's gonna say. That is the dream, and that's also why we must win. Yeah. It's too bad Hannah Lori thinks that uh, Imogen should be running the show, but you know. <laughs> what do they know? She has to be, but, she's, but she also doesn't like Olivia, so she's an ally for now. And my God, don't bring it up when Osric is here. Please. And she's just going to... Okay, come up with the upstairs, uh, please. Uh, we gotta, we gotta at least make the place look nice, okay? Is my place not nice, Mama? Not for company, baby. Oh. She's gonna roll her eyes and say, "Very well, very well. Let's go." As you head upstairs, we're gonna move our scene over to Tulio. Tulio, you're in your apartment right now. Would you like to tell me, the storyteller, since you learned about Imogen, you've been looking into her at all? Absolutely. Tell me how. Primarily relying on the context. Um, this is a question for the storyteller because mm -hmm. we had a question on the sheet. I put down under status Camarilla slash Anarch. I was kind of hoping you would choose for me. Camarilla, I did choose for you. Understood. Uh, I will make that edit. Yeah, I will peek into... Uh, contacts in the camera using status. Mm -hmm. I will um, utilize my retainers from my lore sheet. Um, I'll hit the streets myself and uh, commonly be using the uh, the one dot power throughout this time. A cousin's ear mm -hmm. talking to the Hikata. only applies to other Giovanni, mm -hmm. which you uh, might not run into. Always, any. <laughs> I got remember in that. <laughs> So, um, um, if you would like to roll me your level in either status or contact, whichever is higher for you, and your wits, and add your dots in streetwise, since you said you are going to be pounding the pavement as well, I'll let you know if you learn anything about Imogen. Now, it needs to be a significantly high roll, because Imogen is just as enigmatic as you are. Understood. Uh, what hunger am I at? Still hunger from No, no, you should be down to one. We're, this is six nights later, so you could have definitely fed and taken care of yourself and everything. 
That is a messy critical. Of course it is. They're going to increase your hunger by one. Excellent. Love mm -hmm. that for me. Love that for you, too. And what you know about Imogen is, um, unfortunately, not a whole lot different than what you already knew. You know that she appeared um, in Berlin in, I believe it was 2004 or 2005. You've gotten conflicting dates. Uh, she was found wandering the streets of um, Kreuzberg, um, confused and alone. Um, but uh, someone... But it was, the strange thing about it was sort of the way it was with you, where you were abandoned on a certain road. Um, that happened to be nearby where a Hikata was, strategically so. And where Imogen was dropped off happened to strategically be nearby um, Hanalora Lamia just as you were strategically dropped by nearby the residence of Minerva Rossellini. Now, you were told to go there. That was specifically where you were told to go. You were told to pretend that you didn't know who you were or anything about you. And you can imagine that it might have been the same circumstance with Imogen, although you did not know Imogen existed. Incredibly frustrating. Yes. Does it feel like a betrayal from your sire? feels like perhaps betrayal, but there's also just a, does he doubt me? Is this a contingency? Is it a test? It's hard to know. Either way, I'll deal with it. As you consider these possibilities, you hear a knock on your door. Now that's strange. Usually someone would have to be buzzed in. But this knock is coming from your door. I will uh, head to the door uh, and I don't recall, do I have a peephole? My dog. Um, yes, you do have a peephole. Yeah, I'll peek through. It's Irma. The door is open immediately. Irma looks similar to you. Um, she's a little bit taller than you. She's got sort of your dad's height. And um, she's wearing very Berlin-style clothes, black leather duster and black pants, black shirt. And she says, Hallo, Bruderlein. Good evening. Please come in. And she just walks right past you. Is this is where you live. This is where I live. Can I get you anything? No, I can't stay long. I'm just here on Faza's business. You feel you feel the all the the dead in the city, yes? You feel them? I felt, I felt the pull, yes. Faza's plan is coming to fruition. He he predicted this. He said this was going to happen. Everything is happening as he said. Was there ever any doubt? No, of course not. I just we didn't know the time frame. But now we know. Remember, we have to always be ready. I am ready. I am ready for you to do your duty and come back to Potsdam or bring me here. I miss you. I miss you too. It's Father, all in due time. Sorry, what? It's all in due time. Yes. Time. Father wanted me to tell you something important he told me to tell you that now has come the time has come for you to look for the relic the shadow bane it's in the city now maybe it always was but he can sense it now that the shroud has thinned with all the dead people with all the souls fleeing into the shadow lands as the shroud is thin now and he can sense that the shadow bane is indeed here in the city and you must find it I will. It is foretold. He will have his relic, and I will have you back, and I will keep you safe. Proof. Prove it, brother. Prove it. It is your only duty. You have several individuals that might be useful. He has one question for you, and you must answer true. 
Are you bound to Olivia Dunson? Your hesitation tells her everything she needs to know. She turns around. It won't be a problem. She does not answer you. As she turns around, she leaves your apartment and starts heading down the stairs. Edgar, you have arrived at Tulio's apartment, and the door was propped open, so you did not have to buzz in. And up you go, and as you head up the stairs to Tulio's apartment, um, you see this woman coming down the stairs from her, his apartment. She doesn't look at you. She doesn't say anything. She rushes past you, bumps into you even, doesn't say in Chuljigung, and keeps going out the door. Oh. She doesn't stop. Edgar checks his pockets very quick to make sure she didn't take anything from his pockets when she bumped into him. This is a shitty neighborhood. <laughs> she did not, as far as you can tell. Yeah, he'll just text Osric very quickly. Mm -hmm. Woman coming down the stairs, get a picture. Slip the phone into his pocket. Mm -hmm. And head back upstairs. You see that Tulio's door is open. And he's just standing in the doorway, looking back at the woman who just left. Tulio, you see Edgar coming up the stairs. You did not expect to see him tonight. Normally, this is the part where I ask questions, but I don't even want to fucking know what that was. A harbinger of news and hopefully more good than bad. Welcome, brother. Your let second home awaits. Let me in for a moment. We need to talk before we go. Of course. Please. And girl shut the door behind him and kind of put his back to the door. Osric is upset with us. He's uh, in the car. Just me this time. I did a good job covering for you. It's... He's down in the car. We're gonna go meet. Uh... We're gonna go meet Hannah Laura and Minerva. Excellent. Just how I wanted to spend my evening. With Osric and uh, uh, yeah. It's look. I thought I would give you first dibs when something's going on on the foul and then so but it's not good. You need to come to my place after we finish all this up tonight and get a look at it for yourself. I'll be there. Don't tell anyone. Never. Alright, well, Osric's sweet in the car, so... Allow me to just assemble a few things here. I, uh... Can I smoke in here? By all means. I will, um, just be a few minutes while I prepare some things. And I will withdraw oh. into uh, the bedroom area and immediately text that number. What would you like the text to say? The information that I have uh, a meeting tonight with Osric and Alora, and that there's something strange going on. The text you receive back is bring the family together. They will be done. And I will spend the remaining few minutes, if at all possible, mm -hmm. uh, preparing a ceremony. Uh, I will prepare, if acceptable to my storyteller, <laughs> uh, I will prepare Name of the Father. You'd like to have that prepared? Yes, I think it requires uh, me to make the ceremony roll now and I know that it takes five minutes per level yes you may excellent I need to roll can I ask out of character the particular reason you're preparing that ceremony that uh, particular one fear ah alright interesting Edgar just checks his watch yeah you get a text, Edgar, saying, snap the picture, hurry up.
text back noted we need to know who she is she was here she was speaking to him he sent he um text back already have my people on it so yo come on we got to go lads Uh, that just just succeeds, uh, and no no ones or tens to be to be uh, no detailed. Nothing, no. Lovely. All right. So you have that locked and loaded, as it, as it were. You exit out. Edgar looks impatient with you. Apologies. Trust me, if it was up to me, we'd have all night. But. Uh... Uncle isn't so, uh, patient. I don't understand. He sounded so fun from every other story. He just always has a stuck up his ass. Uh, well, it's probably because he hates you a lot. He just gave me a chance, Edgar. I don't understand. Woe is me. He, he gave you a chance to set yourself up for failure. Speaking of, we're gonna have to meet with the new sheriff. The, some fucking Banu Akeem with a hard on for truth, justice, and the Banu Hakuyan way. Outstanding. Is that tonight as well? More than likely, and if my intuition proves correct, it's probably why we're meeting with Hannah Lori and Minerva, because we're probably going to drag Imogen and Maria along with us. Imogen will be there. <sighs> That can't be not that cannot yet be confirmed, but I have my suspicions. It's gonna need to be a show of arms. This night just got so much better, Edgar. Well, you can kiss her about it later, come on. <laughs> I'll do something about it. And I will follow. As you head down so... back into your car. Yes, sorry. What is your plan? I want to know where she came from. I just want to have a conversation with her. Those are short term, Leo. Are you going to kill her or not? That remains to be seen, dear brother. There is... It's too early on to take anything off the table. And he goes out to the car, opens the door for Tulio. As you head back to your car, uh, and everyone climbs in. Uh, Edgar, you do get a text message from Aelin. And uh, it just says, I don't know what I did, but if this is my fault, I will leave. Text back. It's not your fault. You didn't do anything wrong. Oswick is perpetually cunty. I'll handle it. Cunty. Okay. <laughs> I'll make that note. As you drive, we are going to stop here for a break as the family is going to converge for, a, let's call it a mini reunion, a mini uh, dinner. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our pre-session number two, Conflict. We have just met all of the members of the Coterie individually. Or the not yet a coterie, as the case may be. And now they are all converging in one place to have a meeting. Um, spurred on by apparently a fuck up between Tulio and Edgar a few nights prior. Imogen, you arrive first. You arrive in the borough of Kreuzberg, which this you would know would be more of like what you would call the bohemian part of Berlin. Um, every single surface is covered in graffiti. There are a lot of people here, a lot of cafes and bars. People are standing around the street smoking and drinking and playing music. And it's just a very free spirited part of Berlin. Uh, and where you pull up to is a shop called Esoteric. Uh, and you know this to be Maria's shop, where she sells esoteric things, occult things, in the shop. And up above it is where their apartment is. So you were driven here by one of your mortal followers of the of the Bahari, um, a man named Jaeger. And he gets out of the uh, long car, the town car, and he opens your door, Han Hanalori's door first, and then he goes over and opens your door. You step out and 
follow Hannah Lori. Hannah Lori buzzes the door. And of course, Maria, you hear the buzz. And uh, Minerva is right now cleaning something else, polishing some of the uh, items that she has from when she was immortal in the 20th century. And she goes, Maria, please get the door. Yes, Mama. And she's going to uh, quickly uh, adjust herself, fix her jacket, make sure she's looking clean, and uh, make her way to the door and give it an open. Well, it's been buzzed, so you got to pick up the phone and see who it is. Oh. That's how it works. Here. Oh. <laughs> I'm learning. Mm -hmm. uh, hello? And Hannah Lori looks at you. Oh. Looks to me? Mm -hmm. oh. Maria? <gasps> Imogen! Hello, it's so lovely to see you. Come in, come in, come in, come in. One moment, please. And you buzz the door, and it goes mm -hmm. bzzz, and you can head inside. Hannah Lori insists that you go first. I will. She falls up behind you. Hannah Lori is a very tall woman. She towers over you. She is a um, hundred and, or she's uh, 200 centimeters. So she's over seven feet tall. I did not Good know centimeters know. my heart. You I learn. <laughs> and up the stairs you go. It's a very narrow staircase that goes up from behind the shop up into the larger apartment up here. And Maria is standing there in the door waiting for you. Uh, Maria is just going to uh, go in for a hug. It's so good to Imogen, see you. Imogen will accept this, but be like, you know, the really awkward, like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> How are you holding up today, tonight, this evening? Wonderfully. How about yourself? Oh, I'm doing lovely as always. But yes, come on, come in, come in. Uh, we are just getting the place ready. Hanalore ducks under the archway to come in, and she says, Maria, you don't have a kiss for Danatanta? You don't have a kiss for your aunt? Oh, uh, forgive me, auntie. And she is going to uh, um, offer uh, a hug as well and mm -hmm. a kiss. Hanalore bends down so you can kiss her. <laughs> <clears throat> Is your mother in the kitchen? She's uh, getting ready, yes. Uh... I'll go speak to her. Imogen? Yes, mother. You stay here. Yes, mother. And into the kitchen she goes, leaving you two alone to talk for a moment, if you'd like. So what's going on with you? What's all this about? Um... Uh... Just, I'm, I don't know the details. What's going on with me? Nothing. Hmm. Same as always. Quite, quite. I just found a new spirit. So, that was uh, fun. Yeah. I imagine. Are you in the market for one? No, I'm, I'm okay. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure there are many uses for wraiths. And she'll just smile. I'm okay. Okay, okay. Very well. Are you hungry? No, I, I ain't. Understood. Well, shall we go find a place to sit while we wait for uh, our mamas to finish chit-chatting? Sure. She's going to lead her to uh, one of the couches. It's up there. As you go to find a place to sit downstairs, Edgar, you pull into Kreuzberg. Maybe a place you hate even more than the Mitte is Kreuzberg. Maybe you hate it as much as you hate Friedrichshain. It is just everything opposite from the beautiful place where your mother lives and the beautiful high rise that you have. It is just, it's like rats everywhere. I do not understand how Kindred can live like that. Crazy. It's close to the ground, brother. Keeps things interesting. It keeps one distracted. I'd be surprised how many people on these streets know about the upper business dealings. All of them are hungry to get rich. A lot of them track you, brother. Oh, let them. Christ. 
I can't stand it here. No. Well, you're gonna have to stand it. Come on, let's go. Oh, Zarek. Can we can we bring it down maybe like five percent? Three percent. Tulio, he hands you a key ring. He takes one of the keys off. This is a key to Minerva's place. Go ahead and let yourself in. She knows that we're coming. Give me a second with Edgar. Sure thing, Uncle. So as you head off to the door, Osric takes you by the collar of your shirt, pushes you up against the car. Not loudly, not <laughs> enough to shake the car or be so overt. I'm going to say this one time. And you better listen. You fucked up. I'm trying to fix it for you because, believe it or not, I actually care about this family. And I care about you. If you fuck this up tonight, with Minerva, with Maria and Imogen, and the sheriff, I'm going to stake you down. Kill your harlot while you watch. Kill Kenneth while you watch. Embrace Isabel and feed you to her. Look me in the eyes and tell me I am joking. I hear you. However, you don't need all this. Don't tell me what I need, boy. I'm saying all this, all the you, you, the the theater we're doing right now. I understood you when you said it back in the apartment. Then you would stop complaining and stop asking me to take it down a notch. I would keep your fucking mouth Wait. shut and do as you're told. If you keep on like this with Tulio, you're going to lose the illusion. I'm trying to help you. I'm not a dullard. I know that there's something bigger going on here. What do you know? And I'm... He suddenly shifts his tone entirely. What do you know? Not enough to get me killed, but just enough to make me dangerous. If we're being frank. That doesn't tell me anything, Edgar. And I can't protect I think... you if you don't tell me. I know that you're asking Tulio to go in there with another Giovanni and hoping that blood doesn't fall down the stairs. Or maybe you are. Maybe you set all of this up for some grand fuck up so it doesn't land on you. It would be a good play if that's what you were doing. And I want you to know that you need to start trusting me more. When I say shit like that, out of pocket shit, would I say that to you under any other, cir any other circumstance, Osric? I don't know. Christ, man. I didn't expect you to go into Elysium with a fucking screwdriver, so what on earth am I supposed to think about you these nights, Edgar? You have a ghoul that is not part of the family. You are bound I... to the head of this family and her son. I wasn't a part of this family until I was 17 years old. You were born into it whether you knew it or not. Well, that identity needs to be maintained. I never said I was a dunsern. In that Elysium, no. I, I believe the only identification told, I gave of myself was my name and that I was a you. lawyer. It's not you. 
You told them that Kenneth belonged to Olivia. You told them she was of her blood. That is what you said. Violet showed me the tape. Spuckle. I did. I did. Did you also see on that tape that Tulio name dropped himself? There wasn't anything to hide anymore. There was nothing for you to hide. Hakata coming in fine. A mortal of the bloodline. With Prince Bridenstine culling people left and right. Are you insane? Do you have any idea what this has done to your mother? I made the play I had to. We sent Kenneth away. He's all the way in the Where? north of Germany in Sult. It's an island. We have an estate there. He is being guarded by the Pisanobe, not the Pudanesca. So your mother actually does listen to you, but she won't if she finds out what happened. I have kept it from her so far. I, I made the play I had to to get him out, and you did not. I apologize that it's messy. You could have just let him feed off of his dumbass and just waited. You did not have to interrupt it. You could have I... snuck him out. You could have done anything. But you have feelings for the boy. <laughs> you were the one that told me when someone takes what's yours, you take it back. I never told you to stab a Toreador in the eye. I never said to do that. Do not twist blood my words, blood. boy. Blood does call to blood. And that's why Tulio is up there right now. I took Kenneth's blood back from that toy door and spilled it on the floor. That's who we are. I know we have to play things smart, but not at the sacrifice of who we are, Osrek. That is who we are. The Hakata. Blood for fucking blood. You're gonna get yourself killed, boy. You've all got to die sometime. Yeah. And what are you gonna leave behind? <laughs> More bodies. That's what we all do. I'm trying. I did what I had to do. I made the play that was necessary. And it might land us in hot water tonight. But you know what else it does? It lets them know that they can't just push us around. You know that fucking keeper friend of yours? willy-nilly threw around the murder of us all like it was an easy talk for her they don't fear us anymore they're too busy being afraid Bandi of Bidenstein. well they should know they should be afraid on two fucking sides then gonna take your face in both of his hands and he says if that's what you want then make the sheriff understand plan on it then let's go and Edgar will lean in and kiss him on the mouth I love you as I love you boy alright let's get this fucking shite over with fucking hell and you're gonna play nice with your cousins I Always do. I mean, nice. <laughs> Come on. Come on, you old fuck. So, as Imogen and Maria sit in a nicer room, Maria, you hear the door opening. Not being buzzed, someone has a key. Imogen, I'll be right back. And she's going to uh, lightly pat Imogen on the shoulder for a second before she stands up and strides uh, down the stairs to see who's coming in. Maria, you head to the door, and um, who's opening the door is your, as Minerva insists that he be called, your brother Tulio. Tulio! Brother! And she's going to run up to him and just full-on embrace, if he allows I'll uh, close the door behind me, probably half a step taken back. Kissing on both cheeks. Maria. <laughs> it's so good to see you. you been Excellent. Doing? How are you this evening? Oh, I'm well. Uh, finished up work. 
got some fun new uh, toys to play around with. You must tell me about them. Soon, soon. But what's going on? Even Imogen doesn't know too much about what's going on here. Something, something Osric is dealing with. He's doting on Edgar in the car currently. Did you oh, say they're outside. Imogen. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, she's upstairs right now. I believe I've had the pleasure. Edgar and Osric enter now at this time. Edgar, you got in. You see Maria doting all over Tulio, calling him brother. <laughs> Maria? Ah! Cousin Eddie! And she's going to uh, move from... Edgar will hold uh, up a hand to... very quickly. I just wanted to let you know that uh, you have payments coming up soon. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, I, You know I hate bringing up business and during family time, but that, I just wanted to make sure that we were on the same level. She's going to roll her eyes a little bit, but she's just going to say, yes, yes, of course. Catherine is helping right. me with that, and she, has, she keeps the books better than I do. Uh, You'll have your payment soon. All right, come no, here, Madara. It's, it's, <laughs> it's good to see you. And then, like, yeah, she's just going to run up. And same thing, just embracing, kiss on both cheeks. Imogen, you hear all of this gathering happening. Do you remain where you are, or do you head down there? Uh, she'll stay. Kind of mentally preparing. Mm -hmm. What was that? Maria, I'm you... sure you, you remember Uncle Osric. And Osric immediately runs over to you and picks you up, gives you a big hug. <laughs> Cousin, too, to me. Uncle. Correct. Oh, uncle? Okay. <laughs> uncle Osric, how are you? I am she's wonderful. Squeeze. I am wonderful. Where is your mother? Minerva! He shouts and starts heading up the stairs. We kind of flinch at that shouting, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah. You can tell, you, the you, are... you would know that they grew up together as, as children mm -hmm. in 20th century America. Um, as the two of them are busy interacting, uh, Edgar's going to shoot a look to Tulio and then look up the stairs. Maria, would you be so kind as to introduce us to your other guest? Oh, of course, of course. Uh, by all means, follow me, follow me. And she's going to uh, quickly move uh, to the stairs mm -hmm. with, you know, come on. And the, the, the home, the home that you are in, by the way, is um, very, uh, if you had to describe its aesthetic, it would be grandma's house. That is the Perfect. way that it looks. Although Minerva herself uh, looks like she might be in her late 30s to early 40s. She definitely gives off the grandma aesthetic. We love a Nona, Rosalie. Mm -hmm, that says she's a Nona. <laughs> Good and so up the stairs you walk into... Um, and off to the left into a small sitting room and there you see Imogen waiting and Tulio and Imogen when you lock eyes or when you see each other I need you both to make intelligence and resolve rolls please the difficulty That's needs to be you. significant because of oh my God. something no, because, of something, you say. because of something because of something yeah. because of something Maria's just happy that so many of her favorite family members. You may members not one blood place. surge or willpower here. This is a reactionary thing. Oh. This is not a thing you are actively doing or are aware of. Interesting. Indeed. So to crit is you have to have two uh, tens? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Wonderful. Yes. Tulio, how many for you? That is zero successes. Awesome. As you look at Imogen, Tulio, um, it's almost like a hot poker sticks in the back of your cerebellum in your mind. Um, it, it's painful to look at her at first, but it it's a it's a split second moment. Edgar um, and Olivia, if you could roll me a wits and uh, awareness really quick. Uh, Ed Edgar and Olivia, Edgar and Maria, if you could roll me a wits and awareness really quick. Excuse me. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, too many people with that A at the end of their name. Um, Imogen, for you, seven successes with a margin of two to the previous the, the thing I was looking for you to beat. You feel like a red poker was just stuck up your cranium into your skull. It's painful. And something flashes in your mind. Uh, 
a memory, an image, you're not sure. It's you as a child, young girl, and you're there with Ariana. You're in a house that you don't recognize. And sitting beside you is another girl you don't recognize and what must be a very young Tulio. You're all sitting around in a room. You're playing with dolls while the other girl braids your hair. And Tulio whispers to you, someone came to see us yesterday. Papa pa came to see Papa. Strange man. Mm -hmm. He said that we can't see each other anymore, that we have to be apart because blood calls to blood. And I think Imogen would just look confused and start to say, why, why, why would they say that? I don't know. I'm going to miss you, cousin Imogen. And she'll just hug him. And it's over. Oh. Six successes, Edgar, something's for both of you know something's happening. Something is wrong. Imogen is, uh, looks like, she, both of them look like they're in pain when they see each other. They're staring at each other like they have a psychic connection. Something is wrong. There's no way for you to know what it is, but something is wrong. Hey! He's just like, reach in his pocket and pull a cigarette case out, light a <laughs> cigarette. And Maria's just going to be like, hey, family. <laughs> We're all here now. And Imogen, a hand to Edgar and brother. I seem to have forgotten mine. May I? Um, yeah, absolutely. And he'll take the one out of his mouth and tuck it into Tulio's mouth and take another one, light it for himself. She's gonna. She's like Maria. Mar Maria's eyes are like jumping between Imogen and Tulio uh, in that moment uh, before fixating on Tulio, and she's gonna just kind of like smack him on the shoulder a little bit playfully and just say uh tulio this is imogen imogen this is uh my brother tulio i think imogen looks like she's very straight back and rigid uh standing there she's almost glaring at uh, tulio. cross to be a foot and a half maybe a foot from her is a Pleasure to finally meet you, Imogen. I've heard so much about you. The pleasure will, is all mine. I will not wait for a an extension. I will take her hand and then kiss her fingertips. Sexy kinda. I think if Imogen would allow this and um you know, she's very, very stiff, very, uh, yeah. Well, the pleasure is all mine. It will be. Uh, it will just kind of, like, nudge that, Maria. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, I was about to say the same fucking thing. <laughs> like, Maria is just, like, looking at, looking at Edgar like... <laughs> This is love. <laughs> you got a record player in here, Maria. Do oh, some music. Of course. Any uh, particular flavor you're looking for? Oh, you know my undying love for Huey Lewis. <laughs> Wonderful. I will be right back. And she's going to uh, probably just but not too far from where the couch is, where uh, where Imogen is sitting. Uh, She's gonna uh, shuffle through some through some records and uh, pull out a Huey Lewis record. As you do that, the let's call them three adults enter back into the room. <laughs> Osric Dunsern, Hannah Lori Lamia, and Minerva Rossellini. See that you all have met. Osric is hanging, or rather, Minerva is hanging on Osric. Uh, they're acting very much like siblings, like they've known each other for a hundred years because they have, and they seem very friendly and loving with each other. 
Hanalori is a little bit more standoffish and cold. And um, Minerva sees you, Tulio, and she comes right up to you and starts touching you all over your face. Oh, my boy, I've missed you so much. It's been far too long. How have you been? The... Mis miserable without you, but Maria makes it a little easier. Maria is glaring at this interaction. She's putting the record in. I'll be sure to stop in more frequently. Please do, but call first. I, you know, Osric, I don't like it when you don't call. And Osric sort of looks you all over. He stops and looks at you, Imogen. No kiss for your uncle. Imogen. Of course. Of course, uncle. And she'll move in to kiss him. Mm -hmm. Well, you're all here. Familiarized yourselves with each other because uh, we don't do the reunions as much as we really should. You can always change that. It's Olivia's purview. It's always up to Mother Tulio. I suppose you're all right. Something we don't do often enough in the family is have coteries. We're all family. We're all meant to stand against all the other kindred of the city together. It's at that point that uh, Maria starts playing Hip to be Square <laughs> by uh, Huey Lewis at a low enough volume to where you can still hear people speaking over that. But the city is in turmoil, and it's only going to get worse if Olivia's visions are to be believed. And so now more than ever, we need stability, cohesion, togetherness, cooperation. You mean like an actual family? I did miss you, Maria. <laughs> I will be... I had hoped... Alexander Nagaraja would concede to bringing his child here. But unfortunately, oh. far too many of us are in his debt, myself included, to persuade him of that. I'll talk to him. A different night. Perhaps. He's uh, even more prickly than you, Hanalori. And he sort of nudges her. She does not respond to it, though. So, I'm sure that your cousins can fill you in on why we need you to cohere as a group. But we need you to go meet with the sheriff. The Edgar, sheriff? Edgar and Tulio were very bad boys in Elysium. What happened? Tulio's not hiding his smile. I think Imogen would shoot a look at Tulio. Uh, before we go any further... Um, Osric clocks that, by the way, Tulio. Uh, good. Before we go any further, I, I, I'm remiss. It's good to see you, Auntie Hannah Laurie. She... I missed you. ...looks you up and down. We will speak before you leave, Edgar. Listen to your uncle Osric now. Right, so here's what went down. We got our attention that there was to be a mass culling of ghouls and blood dolls within the Camarilla by order of the Prince Breidenstein. All of you would have, whether you knew this or not, the culling, would have felt the mass leaving of many souls out of Berlin all at once. In rapid so that's succession. what that's so that's what that spiritual wave was. Precisely. And it came to our attention that there was a Hakata asset being held within Maxim as a blood bowl. Who? Who it is doesn't matter. Osric snorts. Kenneth. <sighs> Olivia's son. 
mortal son. So, Tulio and I went to retrieve him. And, you know, as the old saying goes, blood calls to blood. So, I took, I took back what belonged to us. You didn't. But, I was just a screwdriver in the eye. It's not a screwdriver in the eye. First of all, metal. I love it. But also, what the fuck? What the fuck is they took something that belonged to us and they think that's all right. Edgar and uh, Imogen, what's an awareness, please? You two have known Hanalore the most, the longest? Five. How many for you, Imogen? One. Okay. Imogen, you're too concentrated on Edgar saying blood calls to blood. Because you just heard that just a moment ago in a memory you don't remember. But Edgar, as you're talking, you look over at Hanalori, and she is looks incredibly pleased and proud of your actions. After hearing... Ooh what Edgar did, uh, Maria's gonna pull out a, a, a deck of cards, a tarot deck that she keeps in one of her other pockets, and she's just gonna plop right down next to Imogen, um, unblinking eyes, staring at Edgar as she starts shuffling her deck. Mm -hmm. well, focus, please, Maria. We this is extracted how she focuses, Kenneth. Edgar. This is how she focuses. I, I, all right. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, so, so we extracted Kenneth. We have a tentative armistice with the keeper, but it seems she's flown the coop. And her idiot son, if a screwdriver to the eye wasn't enough, decided to go to the sheriff and press complaint. So, we need to go and meet with the sheriff. Tell him exactly what the fuck's up. Make him realize that, yes, he should be afraid of us, but we're not what he should be afraid of first. In essence, this is a mission of redirection. We've got to get him to understand that Bridenstine is the problem, not us. And it should be relatively easy. I mean, for fuck's sake, he, he had the previous sheriff kill his fucking family, as far as I've heard. So... It's a mission purely based on redirection, and this new sheriff is some fucking Bonu Akim. Real, real fucking hard on for justice. So, as long as we get him turned around on getting justice for those blood dolls and those ghouls that were culled unjustly in a fit of madness by someone unfit to rule. I don't think this should be much of a problem at all. But we do need a show of force, and I gather that's why my uncle has brought us all here together today. To show togetherness and unity, as it were. Son of Olivia Any concern questions? indeed, says Osric. Any questions? What do I need to do? Show up, be scary. <laughs> that can come in many think... flavors. Perfect. I think between Julio and I, we should be able to handle the discourse. Be useful also. You can do things that other kindred in the city can't be useful. Right. To in full... I, I don't know what either of you two can do. Uh, but if you can make yourself useful in a way I'm not aware of, please avail us to your services. I didn't mean to cut you off, brother. Please, go on. My only question is, are we offering our services? <laughs> Fuck them. They can handle their own fucking problems. Edgar, if you make yourself useful, it is not a bad thing. If they get into our debt... It is not a bad thing. 
We gotta make sure that we're not letting that debt turn into anything more. Because must I remind all of you, there is a promise that is running out. Their keeper laughed when the promise was brought up. Their keeper of Elysium laughed in Tulio fucking Giovanni's face about the promise. That's because Bridenstein doesn't believe in the promise. But we have insider information, Edgar, that Bridenstein won't be prince forever. Interesting. <laughs> Is there an oh. insurrection uh, happening? Something like that. You would not say that very loud. Either way. That is, if we all want to pick up shop and move over to Friedrichshain, you want to go hang out with the Anarchs. I don't even know if they know how to spell promise. Either way, the prince might not honor the promise, but this new judge, this new sheriff, this man of honor might. I didn't say honor, I said justice. Fair. I don't know him well enough to know if honorable is an apt term. Here's what I know about Kasim. He's not from Berlin. He's only new in the Camarilla, originally part of the Ashira. He's from Marrakesh. That's it. Okay. Not too much information to go off of. Well, he's only been in the city for six months and those and in those six months he's kept himself very very private plenty enough to make us dangerous i'm sorry could you say that one more time plenty enough to make us dangerous <sighs> maybe would you like me to send one of mine to watch over him no huh. do you know about the banu hakim I know that everyone talks about the Blood Witches, but um, they were doing blood magic before the Blood Witches were around. Thousands of years before they were. I am pretty sure that um, if you send a wraith over there, they can detect it pretty easily. Yeah, fair enough. They have wards made in blood to protect themselves from all sorts of things. Is that a knowledge hungry role? Well, Edgar, as much as you were like, fuck them, you're like, but maybe not. <laughs> or maybe we should be really nice to him and, and I should offer my services to this uh, Batman figure in the city. Because um, I would like to learn how to do that. Yes, please. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll reach some sort of agreement. I told you what will happen if you don't, Edgar. And I won't say it again. I... Uh, understood. Uh... All right. Great. Um, when's the meeting, Osric? Well, the sheriff paid me a courtesy call. Well, he paid Violet a courtesy call, who let me know. That mm, it. Mm. He's um, in a borough called Wedding. It um, seems to be at a warehouse in Wedding. I'll give you the address. Other than that, I don't know. He said he will be there all night. All right. Does anybody have any ghouls to spare that we can put on the door? Uh, put on the, the door. Making sure that we don't get locked in. Ghouls available to call to meet you at wedding is, um, I'm sorry, is it Karin or Katrin? Katrin. Katrin. Is Katrin and Aelin. Not, not risking, not risking it. I yeah, can, no, that's... I can send a couple of Pudonesca. <laughs> They're likely to make the situation worse. Well, your mother sent the Pissanobes with uh, Kenneth to Salt, so 
<sighs> Maybe she's listening thank to you. you. And she's thank going you for to... verbalizing that. Look, we're family. They already know. And at any them. point, there could be a Camarola Nosferatu with their ear to the wall, so... We all can see Thank them you. if they're here. We'll activate Oblivion Sight. That won't show any uh, Nosferatu, that'll just show ghosts. I'll let you see uh, dark. Whoopsie. <laughs> Sensi unseen. Mm -hmm. Turn on your senses. Um, mm -hmm. You see your the cigarette case glowing in your pocket. Don't see anything else strange in here. Seem to be pretty safe in here. I'd like to know my own home. Could you put could you put a wreath to the door? Not coming in, just to the door. Sure. I'll be right back. And she's gonna go uh stand and uh make her way uh downstairs. Knowing that Osric is here, not going to use the brand new Not gonna use Giancarlo? Scared. Not going to use Jean Carlo. Well, you, you're you're referring to specifically the warehouse, right, Edgar? Yeah. So not here in Minerva's home, but the warehouse. I have okay. uh, a new wraith that might be just what we're looking for for this. Perfect. Um. Great. All right. Uh, meet at the car in five. I'll drive. Which car do you have? You don't have the Opal. Uh, no. We're driving the, uh, uh what's the technical name for it? Um, we are driving the 20, uh, ooh, I don't have that car yet. At least in that model. He updates the model every year. Sure. It's a 20, 2013 Mercedes-Benz X-Class. It's Lovely. the Benz truck. You don't I mean, want to pile all in in my Beetle? No, same, same Mercedes, right? Yeah, Mercedes. Come on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we've got the Mercedes Benz truck. Uh, all black, blacked out windows. Before Edgar has a conversation with Hannah Lorio, Minerva comes over to you, Maria, and kisses you on both cheeks. You you Mama. show you show them you show them that why the the Rossellini uh should have been in charge over the, the Giovanni while we let them be in charge. Of you course, showed. Mama. Of course. You have my word. We taught them everything they know. I know, Mama. I know. It's okay. We will win. We will get this. I know we will. <laughs> but you be safe. Oh, you know me. When am I well, That's why I say safe? it, because I know you. <laughs> Tulio, I love you, Mama. I love you too, baby doll. Tulio will make a point to uh, kiss everyone on each cheek. Uh, Hannah Lori, Osric, mm -hmm. um, everyone. And when he reaches Hannah Lori, whispers uh, in her ear, Where have you been hiding this one? And I will withdraw. She doesn't respond to you. She's. Perhaps out of all of the family members that you have met, Hannah Lori is the most enigmatic and stoic. Cousin, sister, I will offer an arm to each. I'll reluctantly, out of politeness, <laughs> st <laughs> stiffly mm -hmm. take it. As you take his arm, Hannah Lori reaches out to you, Imogen. And she says, stop by, stop by the town car, get your weapons, send the trunk. Yes, mother. Do your duty, child. Always, mother. That's the four, uh, three of you abscond, and Osric and Minerva go back to chit-chatting and head back into the kitchen. Hanalore stands there. Now, you are tall, Edgar. You are six foot three, is that correct? 190.5 centimeters. Mm -hmm. Hanalore sits over 10 centimeters taller than you. Bow his head in, in a respect that he hasn't shown her probably since he was very young. Mm -hmm. and she has her hands folded. She looks at you. And she says, 
You have always been a great ally to the Bahari, Edgar. I have not forgotten what you did for us. And I... I'm not a fan of family grudges. I think all this business with you and my mother is a bit silly. On her behalf. She will bend down, kiss you on your left cheek, and whisper once in your ear. I also have not forgotten what you have done for us in spite of your mother's decree. She kisses you on your right cheek and whispers in your ear. I charge you with making sure that Imogen comes to her full potential. And then she kisses you on your lips. And that is a favor I will not forget. Always had a great love for you, Hannah Laura. I'll do as you ask. He'll just kind of, in a very kind of out of character gesture of like a family affection, he'll just kind of like gently run his fingers over her forearm. As you do that, <clears throat> she says, her eyes sort of glaze over for a moment. And she says, one day, it will be you, mein kind. Du wirst head of family for the blood linear dancer. We'll see where the ashes fall. Good night. Und zu dir, meine Tante. She just exits out into the kitchen. Edgar's gonna, being alone, he'll check that his handgun is loaded properly. Mm. Make sure there's three in the three in the three chambers and click it back, put it away. Straighten his cardigan a little bit. Oh, uh, head downstairs. Downstairs. Imogen, you stop by the town car where Jaeger is still faithfully waiting. He bows to you as you approach and uh, give him instruction to open the trunk. Yes. He does so silently. And in there is an array of weapons. What would you like to have? You have dots in all forms of combat. Yes. Uh, let's take, since we're more into brawl, let's take a pair of brass knuckles. Mm hmm. This is so new. <laughs> well, she wanted to be a Lamia. I did. And then, um, if I could have one more. You may take a... anything that you like. <gasps> Yay! Uh, so I'll have bra brass knuckles for a brawl, and then for melee, we'll take a dagger. Okay. Just one? Or would you like to double, double hand the daggers? Two. Two daggers. Okay, they're beautiful, pristine daggers set with an amethyst in them. Ooh, lovely. And um, mm, she... Tulio and Maria, you watch Imogen. You, neither of you are super familiar or, you know, super well-versed in combat. Uh, and you watch Imogen very meticulously um, stow away these items on her body. Ooh, Imogen, I didn't know you were so trained. Must always be prepared. What else have you got hidden on that person? She won't say anything. Jaeger shoots you a very serious look. <laughs> well, a kiss to Jaeger. Mm -hmm. And he looks just back grinning. at you, Imogen. Uh, should I tell some, just uh, Hannah Lori, that you are being uh, accosted by someone? No, it's quite all right. I can handle it. Well, so can she, but okay. And knowing everything, she will, you know, be done with what she's doing. 
for reference, Mar Maria does not have melee dots, but will have her dagger on her person just to be safe, just in case. You never know. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's that's about it. She has two points in brawl, and mm -hmm. <laughs> she has a pocket full of charcoal <laughs> and sunshine. Uh, Edgar, you yeah. arrive here now as well as you see. They're all waiting for you outside your car. Edgar will gesture towards the passenger seat to Tulio. Um, go around, hop in the driver's seat. Once everyone's in the car. Well, the seating arrangements, Tulio, are you actually going to sit in the passenger seat? You have free will. I'll offer it to uh, one of the ladies first. Oh, it's perfectly fine. I don't mind either way. Imogen? Oh. I'll sit in the front. By all means. Right. Well, here's the deal. I'm going to start the car and start driving. Uh, first of all, Imogen brought you a gift. Check the glove box with that on. And she will. Uh, inside there is a Colt Python 357 Magnum with a 4-inch barrel. Oh. Okay. Well, thank you, cousin. I noticed you didn't have a firearm. Just... Just for... sake of covering all our bases. Makes sense, of course. Um, and since that came from Edgar, with my wonderful bankers of Dunsern Lorshi, uh, <clears throat> that pistol... You will add a one dice bonus when you use it. That's good because I don't have anything in fire. That's money enhances, correct? Yep. Yes. So where do I note that down? And Edgar will, as he's driving. Right. Sorry about that back there. You know, we have to talk a certain way around the growing ups, as it were. Um, right in the eye with a with a screwdriver. It was really something. That's amazing. That's amazing. I love it. I'm here for it. I couldn't say it in front of Mama, but I'm here for it. it Are you was prepared? A decision based off of impulse, uh. not to be repeated. Did you get that screwdriver back? <laughs> Did you get his no. eye with it? Uh, I don't know. No. It was meant to be more of a shock. Hmm. Either way, we need to go in here with a plan, and it needs to come from Tulio. Can we all agree on that? Fine by me. Sure. Was that the stipulation? That whatever plan we come with comes out of your mouth? I think it's probably for the best. Fair enough. You've got the most name clout. I'm also not entirely unfamiliar with Camarilla at this point. That would have been nice to know six nights ago. Um, we had just met, Edgar. It takes time to build relationships. <laughs> All right, well... I think we should go in from an angle that it is both financially and politically responsible not to pursue this in a time where there is upheaval within the camera, yeah. With the promise, without the promise, doesn't matter. We we are independent at the end of the day. I can approach it from the angle of money. Tulio can approach it from the angle of politics, and both of you can approach it from the angle of our alternate services. I do think the majority of 
what needs to be discussed needs to come from Tulio. Agreed. Fine. Your words, my lips, brother. Edgar is going to. Edgar's going to just kind of look very much out of the side of his eyes at Imogen. So what's the play? What do we? What, what's our angle here? Obviously, focusing on the political people. How do we want to play that out? Because he's not going to take it well. It's going to make his political structure look weak, and he can't have that. He's an official. We've got. I, I don't do the. Polit politics and money are often hand in hand, but I can only hold one of those hands, if you know what I mean. I'm not so sure it would make his political structure look look weak. Keeper fled, which means she was unhappy with her prince. We were cleaning up. She was already housing a number of blood doll schools. We were there meeting out justice, much like he is now. Could approach it from that justice standpoint, yeah. I don't see why Absolutely. not. Play to his own strong suits, so to speak. His own morals. His strength becomes his weakness. Or would he defy his prince? If he believed it to be just. I've often found that those who honor justice don't entirely hold cowards in the highest regard. And this keeper fled a coward rather than stay and make any absolute change. That makes his political structure look weak. Maybe that's our angle. Do we press that wound initially, or do we wait for him to be implacable before we start to press? Not Probably. that this oh. might matter, but Kasim's name, full name, was told to you, Edgar, only. And you would know that that last name is the same last name as the current Baron of Berlin, Sahira. Not if that if that matters at all to this particular plan you are concocting, I just want to remind you of it. Edgar's gonna hold that in his pocket for a worst case scenario. There, actually, no, fuck it. There is potentially another angle. The enemy of my enemy angle. The Anarch Baron and I are not on friendly terms. She continuously harbors people who owe me fucking money. As I'm sure we are all aware, that never goes well. But she currently has the strength of arms to keep me personally repelled for now. What does that have anything to do with our current situation? Their relation, the sheriff and the baron. They're related. In some way. They have the same last name. <laughs> you would, wow, be, this you would be aware that getting... Sahira is a Banu Hakim as well. And they share the same vampiric bloodline as well. Which makes me think, logistically, brothers to sisters would not be out of possibility. 
the plot thickens, so to speak. Well, blood is thicker than water, so they say. <laughs> I love that you caught on where I was going with that. <laughs> but I don't think that may be the case here. If he believes in justice... And he has kin across sectarian lines. He may see that as an injustice all its own. And I also know that both of them, more than likely, were prominent members of the Ashira in Marrakesh. Brother, are we offering an assassination? No. N no, not at all. I would like to keep that for literally the worst case scenario i would i would actually rather shoot my way out before offering up an assassination but it is something that we can press for emotional leverage if need be as long as we approach it in the right way otherwise he could see it as a challenge in of himself That we have that knowledge. How would you approach it then, Maria? As you said, last uh, last ditch effort as necessary, but make sure that he knows that if you're going to offer that to him, make sure he knows that it, we're we're approaching this as helping him with that situation, and not just that we know that information. Always this quiet, imagine. Normally, just listening. A wallflower. No, I agree with everything that's been said. Hmm. I would rather not shoot our way out of it. That seems unproductive. I don't have a gun, so I couldn't shoot if I wanted to. I could throw my dagger, but I like my dagger. Do you need a gun? I wouldn't say no, but not really fantastic with them. <clears throat> Wraiths there's are a, more my thing. There's a big one under the back seat, but I'm hoping that we don't have to use that. Well, as you drive and head into the bureau or the Beziak, as we would say here in Germany, of the wedding, <clears throat> and as you cite a misnomer of a line, blood is thicker than water, you may not realize that the actual line is the blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb. So whether or not Kasim has feelings about his sister or not, well, that will be, remain to be seen which one of those sayings he adheres to. And as you pull into this warehouse, the address that Osric gave you, it, it looks like it is a, um, a shipping warehouse. Um, it looks maybe abandoned, but as abandoned as things look here in Germany, so just um, sort of an overgrown parking lot. Uh, the building is still well maintained. The streets are still clean. And you see two kindred, and you can tell that one of them is kindred. They have red eyes standing outside of the warehouse. Sense the unseen. Wits and resolve. Yeah, everyone who has sense the unseen and wants to turn it on, you can roll me wits and resolve. Uh, wits and all specs, excuse me. I know that it doesn't uh, detect obfuscate, but I'd like to activate oblivion sight. You can. Your eyes will be completely black, and uh, if you enter any bright rooms, it's going to be uh, you're gonna be forced to turn it off. Even um, here in the parking lot, it might be a little too bright. Three? Mm -hmm. Three? Mm -hmm. You look around. Oh, twinning. Twinning. You look around <laughs> around the parking garage. You see one Nosferatu up on the roof. You seeing that, Edgar? I see everything. <laughs> we'll have to test that someday. But yes, we have a, there's a Nos on the, on the roof. Edgar's going to walk up to the two in the parking lot. Evening, lads. All of you exit the car, follow Edgar? Yeah. yeah. 
uh, two people standing there is one male presenting, one female presenting. The one with the red eyes is male presenting. And he says, Good evening. Can I help you? Uh, we're here to see Kasim. Sheriff Kasim. Is there another? Said. That's Papa. You must be the Hekata. <laughs> it must be. Mm. Must we be? We choose yeah. to be. Uh, Bonnie will pat you down for weapons. We are armed. There's no need to pat us down. Is that going to be a problem? Normally, it wouldn't be allowed in places where Prince Breidenstein's inner court is with your weapons. You may surrender your weapons to me or return them to your car. It's your choice. Why don't you ask Kasim if he's all right with it? We'll wait. Bonnie and Niklaus. Interesting, yeah. Sort of give each other annoyed, uh, whatever looks, and Bonnie presses on the intercom and she speaks in Arabic. Does anyone have linguistics? She speaks in Arabic, and he responds, also in Arabic, and she looks very confused and says, "The sheriff says that you may enter." The dog. Right. After you, after you, brother. You pass through. Uh, as Maria passes behind them, she's going to just blow kisses to uh, <laughs> to the guards. The one with the red eyes snarls. <laughs> Edgar's gonna kind of lean into Maria's ear as she passes. Stay close to Tulia. You got it. He'll offer his arm to Imogen. Just give She'll her a light smile. It. He'll take it. Maria's just going to brush up against Tulio a little bit and kind of nudge him. And, uh, I'll take offer I'll offer my arm. And she will take it. So as you walk through this warehouse, <clears throat> it is well lit. So um, Tulio, you will have to turn off Oblivion Sight. Understood. Or you will be blind. Are the other two leaving wits and... Uh, leaving our specs on. Okay. So as you enter and get closer to uh, where you hear sounds coming from, both of you, Maria and Edgar, um, can definitely see there's some sort of magic drawn on the door. It's blood <laughs> sigils of blood of some kind, some ward of some kind. You're just not aware of what it is. You don't have the acumen for it. Imogen does, but Imogen, do you have Sensi Unseen? I have heightened senses. Then you cannot see it. So you do not know, you cannot assist here. <clears throat> Edgar is going to commit that design to memory. And we'll definitely... I require a role for you to really... Yeah, An intricate absolutely. design such as this. An intelligence and a cult role, please. May I, as well? Certainly. Hell yeah. Let me make him a ritual role. To see how many. You said intelligence in the cult? Yes, I did. Uh, three successes. Not enough. So you won't you won't be able to commit it completely to memory. Gotcha. You will be able to commit half of it to memory. Half. And as you attempt to walk in, Maria, it suddenly becomes very clear what that is for. That particular ritual as Giancarlo Putinesca jumps out of the your pocket and uh, all of you can see this you can see a wraith jump out of Maria's pocket and he says <laughs> I can't fucking go in there John fucking Carlo oh you two know each other Edgar fucking wait <laughs> you died you. this is I did. auspicious you're thank Uncle Osric for me 
<laughs> this is who you found? He off you? Yeah, this is uh, this is that spirit that I uh, uh, mentioned. That uh, keep him on the door. Keep him on the door. You heard them, John Carlo. She's gonna say, reaching up and giving me a little bit of, of a pat on that. Uh, Your ghostly. wish is my command, Lady Rossellini. <laughs> That's good. That's really fucking good. Yeah, I hope. Isn't he wonderful? I hope, I hope they, they they killed the blood doll who ratted on me. I can hear everything you guys are talking about, though. So. They didn't. Shame. It's your fault. It's my fault. Loose lips She's not dead. sink ships. And now he works for me. Whatever. And so it is. Let's go. We shouldn't keep Kasim weed. Wait, Edgar. Before we go, are you prepared to take a screwdriver to the eye? I mean, if he's all for justice, an eye for an eye. <laughs> uh, nothing would delight me more. Just something to consider. So I, make things simple. All things get a return. I think Giancarlo is enough proof of that. <laughs> so, <laughs> as you enter into the room, Giancarlo waiting outside of it, you see... A room that looks... Oh, Edgar. If you thought you were hungry at seeing that sigil on the door, you are practically knowledge famished now. Salivating, if you could. The room is decked out in many ritualistic items. Maria, this looks very homey and nice. This is not your type of rituals and ceremonies, and neither is it for you, Imogen. This is not Bahari rituals. This is something else. This is blood magic, and old blood magic, too. There's blood sigils that are written that have not seeped into the walls that are written all over it and you see a person sitting down across from a table and this man who must be sheriff kasim he is um looks very um middle eastern or north african maybe more precisely um very attractive very handsome man he's wearing um just a white uh, sort of old-fashioned uh, blouse we would call it uh, buttoned down slightly in khaki pants, his long dark hair. And he is right now holding his hand into a um, bowl of blood. And the bowl is smoking, his hand is smoking. And he is talking to the person across from the table and asking them questions, yes or no questions. And the person seems to be able to respond to whatever it is that he is saying. And he is asking them, how many kindred have you spoken to? Which kindred have you spoken to? What did they tell you? And whatever the answers were, Kasim then removes his hand from the blood and the blood evaporates in the bowl. And it's apparently not an answer that he feels satisfied with. And he whispers under his breath, Allah muhaladim. And in a split second, he is behind the person in the chair and has removed their head. Sheriff, indeed. Turns as you say that. Um, hello, what uh, do you say? Uh, Welcome. Hello. Salam alaikum. I speak my tongue. Just that. I am. Sheriff Kasim, you are, who are, the Hikata, do you have names? Dr. Tulio Giovanni. Hello. Imogen, let me out. Maria Rusellini. Edgar Wait. I'm sorry, I don't recognize that particular bloodline. Is it new? I'm just, I'm just a lawyer. A lawyer, you said? Mm. Interesting. Lamia, I recognize. Um, and he bows deeply. Your mm, prowess in battle is um, something I respect quite highly. He'll just bow her head in return. There is no Nagaraja here in Berlin. No. 
was a test, Mr. Waite. Uh, I know there is no garage here. Please, let us not start off false pretenses. Please do not start this off by lying to me. I know if you're alive. Aptly said. And you should know family protects each other. I do. If you are open and honest with me, I am very happy to be open and honest with you. Begging your forgiveness, then? I do not accept begging, but I understand your meaning. Please, uh, I'm sure you are, or perhaps you already know why you have been called here. And we do. And he walks over to a door in this room and opens it as he drags the headless body over to it. And as he opens the door, you see there are many more people in this room. Humans. Who are just standing there, scared, frightened, whimpering. And he tosses the dead body in there and then closes the door. They can't hear us. It's all right. You got quite the collection in there. They are not mine. Seems like a busy night regardless. We won't take up too much of your time, sir. There has been a complaint lodged against a Edgar Waite and a Tullio Giovanni by a Mr. Sigmund. A Toreador, the Camarilla. They claim that you accosted him in Elysium. Is this true? Else it is not the word I would use. You said you wanted to be frank. Yes, I do. You've seen the cameras, you know what happened. Yes, I have. As I said that night, he took something that did not belong to him. And we have punished the mortal in question. He knows now that that blood was not his to bargain. Kasim sits down on the chair, puts his feet up. Blut ruf nach Blut, oder? Oder. Yes. I did not immediately put out my scourges to track you down and take their justice on what has happened. I did not do this because... Well... Violette should not have had cameras in her Alicia. That is not allowed. She did. Violette also is not allowed to flee the city. Part of Prince Bridenstine's inner court. That's treason. And that she did. And this is her child lodging this complaint. And in frankness, I am not so far removed from your own family as perhaps you might imagine. I am only here in Berlin because I was trying to reach out to said family. You tell. That is a rather long story. Mr. Giovanni, was it? Yes? Correct, sir. I'm sorry I'm not familiar with all of the bloodlines of the Hikata. When I was a young kindred, there was it was different. There was no united clan of death. It is a nice thing to see, I believe. But I was born as a mortal blood of the Nagaraja family. Alexander Nagaraja was my <clears throat> brother. But where we grew up was violent, different times now. 19th century and the Ashira didn't like having the Nagaraja around and my sister and I made ourselves sacrifices to save our family and we gave ourselves to them and um, instead of killing us the Banu Hakim in charge made us like them and 
Then our family rejected us. I thought perhaps after all this time when I heard what happened with the Hakata when they came together as a family, I thought perhaps things would be different. But I have not found Alexander Nagaraja. I cannot find him in the city. I have looked for months and I cannot find him. I know he's here though. I know he's here. What are you asking for? I'm letting you know that I have a sympathy for your people. I'm letting you know that I would look past your accusations as true as they are if you would be willing to Help me. A job of mutual benefit, it seems. In another life, we would be family. We could be family still. I do not think that is possible. But it's a spirit. nice dream. Sometimes family is through action. I'm sorry, I don't understand your meaning. The proposal you give. I believe that's the action she's inquiring toward. Perhaps it is a language barrier. I am still very confused at what you are saying. We can act like family towards each other, Kasim. Why would you do that? Do you mind if... First off, do you mind if I smoke in here? I do not. We would do that because it seems that we all have things to gain. As small as those gains are, it is worth not losing what massive amounts we have to lose. Do you speak for everyone here? I'm just not saying rude to Leo. It is my charge to come to an agreement. We know the claims. And now we know your predicament. Unfortunately, I wish it was only my, my decision to remove these claims, and perhaps it is my decision. Prince Bridenstine as I'm sure you've heard, is not faring well in the city as of recently. No one would take up the role to be sheriff after what he did to his own family, or what he forced the sheriff to do to his own family. I took it up, because I have no fear of his wrath. But Siegmund cannot remain. He cannot remain. And I cannot give him justice. As that would mean removing both of your eyes. And I do not wish to do it. There is an argument to be made that it would not be justice. Perhaps. And what say you, Lamia? If we can come to a mutual agreement that benefits all parties, I don't see why not. My proposal is this. I take the charges of Violette having cameras and her treason as reason enough to doubt Sigmund's claims. And I give Sigmund to you and for you to dispense your justice. I am very keen to know your morals. In exchange for this, I would like you to reach out to Alexander Nagaraja. I require only a meeting and I would be most grateful for any support you could offer at being a part of that meeting.
Do perhaps any of you know why he is so difficult to find and track down? He's a Nagaraja. Speaks for itself. Perhaps it is my misunderstanding. Are you not united as one clan of death? We are. You all seem as if you do not wish to reach out to Alexander Nagaraja, or that you don't know his whereabouts at this very moment. We will reach out to him. I already have a meeting scheduled. I think it's agreed amongst ourselves, and I'll look to everyone, that your terms are agreeable. It works for me. Like I said, mutually beneficial. You're the heir to the throne, brother, whatever you say. Kasim laughs. It's so strange. I know you were not speaking to me, but it is so strange that you say that. I met a man tonight. Prince Bridenstine's child said that to me. I put very little stock into the what Malkavian see. I do not believe that they can see properly through their own lenses. As the destiny works in mysterious ways. I do not know your bloodline. I do not believe they were in Marrakesh, Rossellini, or is it new? We are as old as the Giovanni. But not as famous, unfortunately. Not yet. I, I say it only as a as an observation. Of course, of course. We've been working more in the shadows, so to speak. You're of no garage of blood, you should know. Moving in silence is often more useful than fame. Unfortunately, Mr. Waite, hundreds of years removed from it, and under the strictness of the Ashira tends to warp the memory a significant amount. Well, even you, Banu Akim, you move in the shadows when it suits you. never really my strong suit. I would have fallen to my, brood, my broodmate. Right. To cement this friendship, I must ask, may I be in your debt? Of course. I need to hear that from all of you. I don't see why not. Yes, of course. I'll take a fever for a fever. I did not want to kill. As I'm sure you have heard, many of the blood dolls and ghouls of the city are now dead. Have been dead over many years. I am in search of one particular blood doll that uh, has seemed to have disappeared. Um, according to some of the other ones I spoke to before ending their lives. I do not wish to continue it any longer. I have tried to determine how much they actually know and how much of a threat they are before killing them. The ones that aren't threats I have put in this vault behind me. And the rest of them I or my scourges have slaughtered or their own owners. It is a heavy burden that I do not wish to carry any longer. Will you do something with these dolls, these ghouls? We could find some use for them. I would need to hear an acquiescence from all of you. This is not justice not in my moral code. What are you going to do about it? I'm sorry, could you repeat yourself? What are you going to do about it?
I am going to wait for Providence. What would you suggest I do about it, Mr. Wade? It's just a question, Kasim. Yes. And as, as, rare as, those, as rare as those are these nights for a question to just be a question. <laughs> that is precisely what it was. I am not in such a secure position that I can openly defy the prince without being condemned an anarch. And an anarch I am not. I believe in structure and I believe in order. I believe in the masquerade. Julio speaks for me. He says we'll make use of them otherwise than we will. As I said, we can absolutely make use of them. I can think of the... Your companions, no look to Imogen, make frequent use of morals, am I correct? She'll let's have a very slight curl of her lip. You are correct. We'll spread the wealth then. Sounds good for me. So, we have come to an accord then. <clears throat> And he <clears throat> presses on the intercom, says something in Arabic, and the man with the red eyes enters, Niklaus. And uh, he walks over to uh, a room that you can't see from the room that you're in. And it sounds like he opened something very large and heavy. And he comes back with what looks like the frozen body of Sigmund. And he plops it down on the table loudly. Kasim says, you know, all of our sires always tell us about the sun and stakes and beheading and fire. They always forget to mention what cold can do to our bodies. He can hear you. It is up to you to dispense justice. Oh, stop. Edgar's gonna step up. We'll walk side by side with Edgar. Marie's just watching right now. So is Imogen. I will, if Edgar allows, lift him to face Edgar. His face is completely covered in ice. I'd hoped this would go differently. I'd hoped that you would see your reason. Sigmund. Look over Sigmund's shoulder at Tulia. He's this whelp is of no consequence to me. I have no use for him. Maria. Yes, brother. Please. Um, she's just going to pull out her ritual dagger and hand it hilt first towards Tulio. I will press it to his throat and whisper in his ear. For every insult you and your bloodline has ever dealt the Akata, and for you personally making an attempt against my brother, I, Tulio Giovanni, sentence you to death. And I will carve into his neck. All right. It'll take a little while with just that ritual dagger for you to remove his head entirely. Kasim looks completely unfazed by this. And Edgar, wits and a call, please. Wits and occult. 
Roger, Roger. Can I blood surge for that? Yes, you may. This is not that particular role that Imogen and Tulio had to do. I'm not going to get any hungrier. Wonderful. Doing much, doing much better on those rolls than the last session. Mm -hmm. Um, as this uh, person is meeting their final death, um, I would like to activate the binding fetter and to see if anything on starts emanating. Yeah. yeah. You can you can roll me that um, intelligence and oblivion. <clears throat> Three successes. As in that wits and in that wits and oblivion. Wits, it, it might be wits and oblivion. You might be right. Um, as Kasim sort of stands up and sort of observes Tulio's um, judgment here, you notice uh, in his open shirt, he's wearing a necklace. Um, and with three successes, when Aelin was speaking to you about her belief system, the path of Asha, Zoroastrianism, it, it said something back here, but didn't really register. But now you see his necklace... It is um, looks like a man with long wings that stretch out to either side of him. And you recognize that this is the symbol of Zoroastrianism. You've seen it before in Charlottenburg. They have a temple there. I'll just kind of point to it. Zoroastrianism. And he looks down. You are familiar. Somewhat, I'd like to get more familiar. I would be most honored. Mm. But the most important thing you need to understand is we believe good thoughts, good deeds, good actions mm. are the path to enlightenment. I'd like to call in that favor. So soon. If you got. Hi. Yes. The Nosferatu you have up on the roof. Yes. I'd like I'd like to speak with him. Oh, it's a her. Her name is Forgive Ad me. Her name is Adelaide. Adel Adelheid. Hey, I'd like to speak with her. Of course. And he goes over to the intercom to buzz it. Yes, what did you roll for the buying feather? Four successes? You see mm -hmm. that um an earring that he has in the upper part of his ear is a feather. But it She's is gonna not move a up. feather that belongs to him. Hmm. She's going to move up to uh, right next to Tulio. Uh, and she's just going to... Uh, you, you took the head completely off, right? Yeah, the he's, goal... He's working on it. Yeah, and the the goal for storytelling purposes, I know that kindred bodies will will be fully destroyed mm -hmm. uh, quick, very quickly. But the goal, if at all possible, given my time frame, is to keep the skull for wisdom of the dead. Hmm, a kindred skull. Entirely your purview to say yes or no. It's going to turn into ash. You would really need a mortal skull for this. Not a problem. But you do have one. He did decapitate a human. Perfect. And you have access. You will have access to that vault as you have to deal with all these humans. There's about twelve in there. Excellent. And one dead one. Um, Maria is just gonna come up and almost like she's helping to hold the head for you to carve into. She's gonna whisper, "I need the earring," and she's going to attempt to grab for the earring with her other hand and cover her hand as much as i can with my own body as if trying to avoid another spray of blood all over his already ruined suit <laughs> <laughs> as you do this um kasim buzzes for adel adelheid to come in and she does she's uh dressed very belina she's wearing um black latex and she's uh, got lots of studs and piercings wearing a dog collar she just stands there. Just walks up to her. Just, Hello, my darling. I'd like to discuss a business arrangement with you. But they have 
business arrangement with the Hekata. Would you like to make one more? Quick cash, one-time deal, in and out, done. Depends on what that is. I'm very busy. At this point, if you are okay with it, um, I would like to use the money talks part of the Bankers of Dun CERN lore sheet that mm -hmm. gives me a contact in this scene equal to my resources value. Mm -hmm. This is once per story. Uh, this is once per story. Mm -hmm. Not once per session. Correct. And a story is a chronicle. This would be I'm more. this would be using your your merit of your lore sheet for the rest of however long this chronicle lasts, and how many seasons it lasts. This would be okay. your one time using it. We'll put that on hold for now to see if it's necessary. <laughs> I am just, I told you, I have nothing if not warning beforehand. Love that. Um, Edgar, yeah. One one time deal, quick money, in and out. We never have to see each other again. I'm sure I'd be seeing you again. I'd like that. Do you want to, do you want to make some money tonight at the height or not? Mm. Adelaide doesn't pay me doesn't pay me very well, so <laughs> No she does not. But I can. What's what would the price of you setting a meeting with one of your own for me cost? Depends on which one. Yancy. Hmm. I really think I would know where Yancy is. He doesn't even live in Berlin. Not all the time, anyway. I do think you know. Yeah, the Fawanen so probably. You should set a meet for me. I'm sorry, I don't think I can. Because, um, he's not Camarilla, it's not Anarch, he's not, uh, he doesn't, I don't even think he thinks of himself as a Nosferatu. I think he thinks of himself as a big poof who gets to hang out with the dragon on the Fawanen so. He thinks he's better than all of us. And he's not in Berlin right now. As far as I yes, know. He is. Yes, he is. And you can tell him that I saw him tonight. You may roll a wits and insight to see if she's lying. Specialty and truths, I'm assuming, mm -hmm. applies here. It certainly does. All right. Jesus. That's that's a lot. All right. So that's two crits, which is eight and none of them on a blood. Three more right? successes. No. Okay. She is Fortunately, to waste such a wonderful role, she is not lying. She doesn't seem like she likes him very much, and you're getting this... You've always heard the Nosferatu all hang out together. They're more clan than sect, and, um, you know, they gotta belong to one of them. You know, what kindred is just a kindred alone? And uh, she just offhandedly says, I mean, I think the last time I saw Yancy is when uh, I was in Bargain with the witch, and uh, they were palling it up. And uh, he can talk to anyone, go anywhere, do anything, and he's untouchable because of the dragon. Everyone is afraid of getting on his bad side because if the dragon shows up on the mainland, then suddenly we're all going to die, is what everyone says. I'm inclined to believe it. <laughs> uh, why? I see things. God, you're just as annoying as he is. Try. I'm not paying you for success. I'm paying you to try, earnestly. I said I don't think he's here. I saw him tonight. Going to the Fallen Insult. Yeah, and he may as well not be here if he's in the Fallen Insult. Unless you want to go there. He'll come back. 
And when he does, I'd like you to ask him to meet. I'll try. I want to tell Adelaide that she has very annoying cousins. Uh, you should do precisely that. What's your price? Oh, you take me dancing in Berkeley. So you have. So you do know who I am. I know who everybody is. It's kind of uh, our thing. All right. Tomorrow night, then. I'm busy tomorrow night. I'll call you. <laughs> You're growing on me, Adelaide. Yes, probably. Call me when you're ready to go and I'll take you. Sure. Is that it? Can I go? Choose sleep, Chen. <laughs> Ciao. And she leaves. You removed the head of Sigmund successfully. Maria, you have a new fetter. And uh, Kasim observes all of you and he says, Well, I leave the warehouse in your capable hands, Clan of Death. Thank you. It was a pleasure to I meet walk... you. Yes. Mind if I walk you to the door, Sheriff? Of course. Thank you very much for being open and honest with me as I requested. It is of utmost value to me. Hmm? And I do, of course. I do hope moving forward we can have an amicable relationship as long as I serve this city. I believe that we can. I see that being very fruitful in the future. And I will do what I can to convince Prince Bridenstine to open negotiations with, uh, I believe it is Olivia for the promise. It is. And I do hope that this shows and will show a piece of faith that the Anarchs are not the ones you should throw your lot in with. Rest assured, Sheriff, this night will not be forgotten. Thank you, Mr. Giovanni. And Miss Rossellini. And he looks at you, Imogen. I hope this is not offensive, as I am not part of your faith. Ahai Lilitu. I uh, Mr. Wait, you may walk me to my car. Edgar will fall in step with Kasim. Mm -hmm. Are we still operating under the spirit of honesty, Sheriff? For my entire unlike. Your sister. What's your plan? Oh, you are much more hmm, informed than I gave you credit for. It's my failing. My plan for second. It was more of a hunch, but you did just confirm it. I must admit, Mr. Waite, I did, I have heard your name before. You uh, and she are not on good terms. She harbors my debtors under the promise that they need not repay what I've given to them freely and of no malice. That is most egregious, Mr. Waite and is completely in line with the beliefs of my sister, Sahira. She's angry, vengeful. She would rather the city burn than to see it be structured. She is one of the warriors of your clan, then. Condolences. She was uh, 
great admirer, follower of Urshulgi. I had to drag her kicking and screaming out of Marrakesh. And she has not forgiven me for that. Inshallah. Thank you. Right. It's going to have to be dealt with eventually. If this... Prince Bridenstine's child is to be believed, she will force my hand. And when she does, no favor needed. You call on me, and I will honor our end of the promise. Regardless of whatever decision my mother makes with Bridenstein. I will remember that, Mr. Wade. Sihira has to be dealt with. That is my priority on that matter. Hmm. How complicated family is. I'll make sure that... Alexander and Adelaide are apprised of the situation. He will take his necklace off and hand it to you. You may, should you really wish to learn what can give kindred peace even in undeath, I would be more than happy to teach you my faith. We'll see. Good evening, Mr. Oh. Wade. Good evening, Sheriff Kasim. He gets into his car, Miss Scourges. Get into the car, drive him away. Now you are left with bodies in a warehouse. And I need to know before we end this session, what are you going to do with them? If they need to speak with Olivia, all of them. I'm inclined to agree, but if I might take two or three for personal use. Tell Mother if you don't. Fair. Mother, I did you. promise... Uh, promise at least one to you, Imogen. Yes, I was going to ask kind of Laurie if we needed more. I have a little request. The answer to that question, Imogen, is Hannah Laurie always needs more. Always, more yes. They die so quickly in the rituals. Uh, to be clear here as well, for let me, let me Let me do with with, with Maria's request. Um, uh, Maria is just going to, like, she said that to the coterie. She's just going to be like, uh, any uh, items on the bodies that you don't need? that anybody might die just i would like them that's all <laughs> can have their things after we're done you fucking klepto <laughs> i love you tulio <laughs> uh would it be possible um if i might uh i want to go step into the room mm -hmm. alone you if open, that's open the vault everyone. I need a volunteer. You're talking to the people? Mm -hmm. They all look terrified, tired, um, hungry, thirsty. They've been in, you don't know how long they've been in here. I will choose uh, the most beautiful one that I can find, despite their current Certainly state. Can. She doesn't look that dissimilar to Imogen. Perfect. <laughs> You are all now saved. And you will remember the, the face of your savior. And I will cut my wrist and bid the one I've chosen to drink. She will. She very clearly was a ghoul. Or is a ghoul. 
and she laps at your blood willingly. Rouse check, please. Yeah. And you're doing this alone, correct? With no one in if the room. No one, hopefully no one else followed me. Uh, that's up to them. Leo, uh, as Tulio goes in, Edgar is going to just kind of like see what he can see. Marie is respecting. The room is covered in rituals. You, the door is closed. You can't see through it. It's not x rayed And then, then let him let him have it. Can I hide? As far as Edgar is concerned. What's happening? Well, yes, of course you can. I'll do that. Mm -hmm. So you hear the exchange that's going on. If you'd like to interrupt it. Since there's downtime while that's happening, I would. Would it be possible uh, to with my with the. Um, uh, since the unseen, sorry, to now that we have time to actually go up to one of those um, markings that we saw that I only got half of before and possibly get the other half. Yeah, I'll let Edgar not. do that too. If you want to take some time <laughs> to actually, you find some paper in this room to actually write it down, that's fine. What did you roll on your Rouse check, Julia? Uh, success. All right. So she is now your ghoul. Where's my list? Her name is Sabrina. Excellent. Ooh, pretty. Um, how we would say it in German is Sabrina. Oder, oder, Sab will... oder Sabina. I will uh, continue speaking to the others as she drinks. Mm -hmm. You will remember the face of your savior. And should I come to you again, I expect your memory to hold true. And you, my dear, are going to be a most perfect gift. And I will take her hand and walk her out of the room and present her to Imogen. Imogen, you would have heard all of that. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you activate heightened senses, you would have heard it all. Oh, absolutely. Um... Who is this? My gift to you, dear. Narrow her eyes. Why? I'm a man who honors his promises. I'm loyal to very few things in this world. Family. And I will shoot a look to Imogen. Being one of the highest in my bracket jaw will tighten a little bit and she'll beckon the girl to come to her she'll sort of look at Tulio for approval to do this I'm not and she will we'll find you a new home she just not so that takes care of one. How about the the other eleven? Is your plan to take them all to Olivia? It's Edgar's plan. Any other plans from the rest of you? I would just like to keep one for myself. I was about to ask. I want one for Mama. <laughs> if whoever the the rest, if Olivia doesn't want them, yeah. Then, okay. Uh, so I'll so take we'll, them all. so. <laughs> Edgar's going to be insistent that they bring them all to Olivia, and then you want to divvy them up after that. that yeah, correct? that's the goal. For me, at least. Is yes. that the goal for Edgar? As long as that's what everybody else says we're doing, and nobody pups a fit about it, then yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I did try and rouse the blood for that uh, for that Rudy roll to get the other half. Mm -hmm. uh, I do get one hungrier. Mm-hmm. Um, but I am sitting on seven successes. You absolutely could copy that down. Just had someone to teach you thaumaturgy. Get there. Mm. Oh, only someone in this room knew thaumaturgy. <laughs> Wait, what? No, I don't know. What? Someone knows what? Oh, crazy. That's weird. That's weird. Crazy. <laughs> anybody, what anybody's what nose what? itching currently in this chat? <laughs> um... But yeah, um, Edgar Edgar will call call up a larger car so that we mm -hmm. can like ac probably actually call up one of the uh one of the discreet 
semi trailers that we use for this sort of thing mm -hmm. and have them come down to pick everybody up i would like it to be known that um since it was asked if anybody was looking like they they'd be they'd have something to say about that maria did say she was fine with sending them to olivia but she looked very perturbed by it all right after ecker gets off his call i'll just look over something you'd like to see what are you ah it's just you know i have my issues with olivia and it's just us kids right now so feel free to clear the air Later, I promise. We'll talk later more. What makes later any more secure than right now? Right? What stay? What happens between the four of us stays between the four of us? Am I right? Your lips are sealed, brother. Of course. Mama doesn't like Olivia that much. Wouldn't so? It's rubbed off on me a little bit. I don't like how she's handled a few things. Let's leave it at that. All right. Edgar looks very unbothered by this revelation of information. Trust me, if it was any more, I would have tell. I would tell you. Um, great. Um, why don't we keep two people in here, yes, with them, and two of us out in the parking lot waiting for a car, so we can make this quick. Uh, Imogen, care to hit the parking lot with me? Sure thing, cousin. I'll just kind of give a knowing nod to Tulio and head out to the parking lot with Imogen. Are you, are you taking Sabina with you? Uh, I'll leave her. Just kind of as they get out to the parking lot. I've always done right by the Bahari. Have I not? You have. I have a love for Hannah Lori. She's good in her own way. Hmm. Tulio knows something. He asked the right questions and I promised him an honest answer and I feel like you should know. Her smile will drop. Regardless of that, we're supposed to be a coat right now. And I take that very fucking seriously. Whatever it is going on between the two of you, squash it. I'm begging you. I have no ill will towards Tulio. Come on, Imogen. Imogen, is that the truth? No. Manipulation and subterfuge versus wits and insight, please. She's a bad liar, too. This is rough. Your specialty in truths will apply here. Oh, got it. Oh, great. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so I'll just wait till Leo. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Uh, eight successes, messy crit. Mm -hmm. So you're going to increase your hunger one more time. You're now at hunger four. And your conversation with Imogen moving forward now is going to be a little bit on the angrier side. On the hangrier side, perhaps. As your mother's voice rings in your ear. You know how to do it, boy. Put her on her knees. Make her tell you the truth. 
We don't have time for games. Imogen. Don't fucking insult me by lying to me baldly to my face. I have always done the right by you, and I'm not going to stop doing that, but you're, you're pressing me a bit. Edgar's feelings have descended. Imogen. She'll clock that. I'm sorry, cousin. I'm, I've been on edge all night. Truth be told, I don't trust him. Does trust have to do with it? You're right. Honestly, honestly, I mean, look. look. We're going to be out here doing shit together. I'm going to talk to Alexander about Dragon Adelaide into this as well. Now is not the time for fucking about. Plainly put. Whatever the beef is, squash it. I clocked that look between the two of you. Back at Esoteric. There's something fucking happening here. And I want you to know, very, in very plain words, that was what erased the doubt of the rumors in my mind that you are a Giovanni. I've, everyone's heard the fucking rumors. Every single person in this city has heard the fucking rumors. And I have repeatedly squashed them every time they came up. If you're not doing it for him, do it for me. You've done right by me, cousin. I w- Any ill will will be dealt with and eradicated. Right. So now in the terms of fairness, I will offer you the same thing I offered to Tulio. You can ask me one honest question for one honest answer if I can do the same. Do you know why he was asking about me? I know what I've inferred. He wants to rule. And by inference, if... Fuck trying to play around with words anymore. You're a threat to that if you're a Giovanni. Which you are. There's got to be more. Or what? More to it than that. I don't think so, my darling. He didn't lie to me. I am very, very sure of it. He wants to rule. He wants it all. Okay. Thank you for your honesty. Do your allegiances lie with Hannah Laurie? Always. Imogen, is that the truth? Yes. She's telling the truth. That girl just lean in and kiss her on the cheek. I have a great love for you. We're in this together now. All of us. Fuck, I need to eat something. Christ. Before we end our session, Maria, as you Mm -hmm. wait around for the car, and you have all these like really, you know, like, oh god, you could get a lot of fetters, and you got this cool new fetter, and you gotta go, you know, just waiting for everyone, like so you can go back home and do what you want to do. Um, <clears throat> you walk out and check on Giancarlo, and he's still standing out there, can't cross the barrier because of whatever Cassim did. And he says, um, that Edgar guy is such a prick, right? My god. He's even a prick even when I was alive, and he's still a prick. Hey, 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 hey. What? That's my family you're talking about. I'm your family. You're dead. Oh, so are you. And he's still alive. 
Well, you know, undead, whatever. You're oh, a fucking God. wraith. Oh, you yeah. know that, right? Cutting, what is it? Semantics, right? But, oh, hey, 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 let me just say something. Let me just say something. If you really... If he ever gets under your skin, and he's gonna, it's, it's inevitable. Hmm. The little bitch who got me killed ran her mouth about me. I mean, I was running my mouth, but then she went and ran her mouth about me, and they're supposed to know better at these blood dolls. One time, when I was with her, I um, mm -hmm. opened my senses. I really wanted to experience something really fucking powerful. Something, something special about her. You You're a creep, you know that? Yes. Yes. Proud. Goddamn proud of it. But, um, she had a glow about her. Something real special about her. And when we die and we're special, like me, look, you can see my whole body. When we die and we're special, well, our ghosts become special too. I don't remember her whole name, but it was Aelin. If you find her Aelin. and ice her, better be a pretty sweet wraith. And uh, it would make me feel better, too. The glow, you said. Special. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it means. There's a little notebook that she keeps tucked uh, in her jacket. She's going to pull it out with a little pen. She's going to write Aelin in there. Question mark, question mark, question mark. I'll keep that in mind. And hopefully this shows you that I am well worth your time and attention. Yeah, and I we do... still need to talk about Ida. Well, you got to find her feather. I can't do that for you. But if you let me skin ride your body, then I can look for her. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know how I feel about a creep like you doing that with me, but we'll see. I have plenty of time to wait. As do I. Mm -hmm. Now back in the cigarette case, Ugh. you go. Fine. Okay. And that is where we're going to end our pre-session two conflict for this evening. In our next session, we are going to be uh, jolted back into the past with Tulio and Imogen. And... Lucius Giovanni to see what on earth was going on there and how these two strange kindred came into the city of Berlin. And then after that, we will uh, have Adelaide join the Coterie, hopefully. And for the final session, we're going to be jolted back into a past before you all were hanging out together to Lucius Giovanni's first foray back into the city of Berlin and a meeting between a Nosferatu and a witch. So thank you everyone so very much. <laughs>